three, two, one. Boom! And welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Mossberg. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. Do not be sleeping on that 940 waterfowl gun. I'm telling you, it is a game changer. It handles everything that we have thrown at it. Uh, I, I could not be more more pleased with how the Mossberg 940 waterfowl gun Good has guns, operated. good people. Yep. I talked to their rep at uh, Delta. Really nice guy. Make good quality product, good people. American gun. Knock yourself out. So on the last episode, Jimbo asked a very prudent question. What was it? Is the economy bad? Is the economy truly bad? I said yes. And I said... I don't know if the economy is bad, but I do know that a lot of people are clutching their pearls right now. Now the stock market has cratered. Or not cratered, but i tell you what we're going to do. I'll tell you who's getting rich today. Hang on a second. The wealthy. Hang on a second. Getting richer. Oh, no. This might not work. What are we going to do? I'm going to try to call Steve Barber. <laughs> He's a little grouchy. Yes, he had to go to, he was going to the doctor today. Did he? Yeah, I talked to him this morning or last night or yesterday evening. Uh, I think it's this one. I think he found my number. I talked to him last week. Oh, that's what he's gonna say if he answers. He's at the doctor. I think he's the he might not answer because it's a Facetime. Yeah, he's at the car- he's at the cardiologist. He don't know how to do that shit anyways. All you guys do is hit the green button like you would normally do. Do you Facetime Steve ever? No, but he's I don't. One hundred and twelve. I don't have service. To- so Steve that. Barber's unavailable. Yeah, I think I think he's at the doctor's. He told me he had a meeting at the doc today to find out what the game plan was. <clears throat> okay, well I was going to try. He is the um, me and him trade stock tips quite a bit. I noticed neither one of you is retired. Well, I guess Steve is. So how are y'all doing? Uh, you know he's always <laughs> saying hold. <laughs> if it, here's I just read something a minute ago, and I, I do not know how true this is. This is just coming off, but when as I was leaving, Michelle was telling me about it. And I kind of raged a minute or just glanced at it. Robinhood, was that that was the place you can trade crypto and stuff, right? There he goes. Here he is. Here All he right. is. Oh, god damn, Steve. You gotta fucking hold on, dude. This is gonna be torture. A 75-year-old man trying to FaceTime. God dang it. He's praying to doc. He's praying to meeting. Well, why did he call me back then? You just call him and then tell him you're gonna I FaceTime. I don't him. have service. Oh well, yeah, I don't either. So I don't do any good either. I'll try to do a regular call, but it, it won't go through in here. I'm not even going to waste my time doing that. It's FaceTime or nothing. So, anyways, I... Uh, I They're was, more worried about China. The China uh, stock market has crashed. Mm-hmm. It, so, what happened is Robinhood has froze all their stuff. Right. Now, if y'all will remember the American people, during the big GameStop, where people were overpricing it and was making all the money... Robinhood, them places, limited what you could buy. You can only buy like five shares a day. Do you remember that? Yeah, vaguely. To prevent, well, what's happening today, supposedly, they froze their accounts where people can't sell because people were unloading all their stuff. So the mom and pop that have got a 401k that's made some profit the last couple of years wants to sell all their shit and hold their money and put it into something else in two or three weeks. They can't sell theirs now. But I'm promising you right now that Black, is it BlackRock? They're saying this is an outage. So it's a legit outage. It's not. Microsoft crashed last night because I was talking to Payne. Last night at midnight, me and Payne were on the phone, and Microsoft had had a, had a uh, crowd strike again or one of those things, had gotten hacked again because I figured all the airlines were going to be shut down again today, and they weren't. Online brokerages, uh, including Charles Schwab, Fidelity Investments, were down for thousands of users on Monday. This is This article is 26 minutes old. According to outage tracking website downdetector.com, Dirk was telling me about that at Squad Fest when uh, all the airlines went out. The report come against the backdrop of a global route with Wall Street's indexes tumbling at the opening of weak economic data and drab second quarter earnings sparked recession fears and prompted a rush out of everything from equities to crypto. Schwab was down for more than 15,000 users. While the outage reports on Fidelity were 3,000. So that's not a ton of people. I mean, it, it is if you're trying to dump everything. If that's your life, right. yes, it's huge. But, but now I've always heard, so I'm young-ish. I'm middle-aged. If you think you're only going to live to be about 75, I'm middle-aged. True. I don't, want, I don't think it's advantageous to me to sell everything. 
No, because you're in the long term. Now, right. if you made a lot of profit the last three years, yeah. when everybody else was struggling, and you took that money and then reinvested everything that you have right now in two or three weeks, you're probably going to be able to buy it for 20 or 30% cheaper and start all over again. Maybe. What if this is a slight dip? Because that's what doesn't make sense to me. All the laws of economics, all the laws of physics don't apply. You know what I mean? No, I have no clue what you're talking about. Like, it, it drops, but it's just going to go right back up five days later most of the time. I think this is going to be more like 2008 and nine, when Ford went to a dollar and stuff. And I hope it does. Where you really have a lot, a lot of stuff where you can buy back in at a good Fuck deal. Yeah. But if that's the case, then you're better to sell all your shit now. Absolutely. Hold on to that money. But you can't guarantee me that it's no, going to go to a dollar. You can't. No, I'm no. You can't. Nothing. There's no guarantees at all. But I mean, it might go down for a couple of days but, and then go up and stay up. But why are the big big wigs all unloading their shit? Right. Because they think that it's going to go <clears> way down. Warren We're going to take off that profit. He sold 200 meta. Uh, he apple, sold a apple, shitload of apple. apple. Yeah, apple. shitload of apple today in cash and apple. just has it sitting there waiting to reload. I think apple was down 10 or 20%. Uh I I I've, I've um I did a little bit of research on this this morning via TikTok. So I can look real quick. Apple stock. I, I'm not a financial guru at all. At, at all. Don't know shit about the stock market. Don't pretend to be, so I'm not going to get up here. And... down 5% today. Okay, which is a lot of money. What, Five days, it's down 5%. What's, what's it cost a share? 208. Yeah, 5%, so that's going to be 10 bucks, 12 bucks. Uh, five A month ago, it was 219. And what's it now? 210. Yeah, I mean, it's... That's, 209, 209, I'm sorry. So it's down 5%. Over the last three months. <laughs> no, the last six months, it's down. No, it's up 11.5% in six months. So, see, there. But but if you're a big player and you've got, and you've got $10 million dollars right, there, right, right there and you sell today and it goes down another 5 or 10%, right. you buy back in and you're going to get the bump coming up. Right. A lot of people are going to make a lot of money off this. A lot of people are going to lose their money. But it's I just don't like that trust one. anything to do with the big companies. We've got too many big companies that control too much of this shit. You don't like that? No. Well, how are you going to keep them out? You can. It's capitalism and for free enterprise. Right. We've just gotten to the point that we've gotten such big conglomerates that control stuff. Like the like the real estate market right now. You go to a big city, and they're building thousands and thousands and thousands of homes mm -hmm. for a lot of money. And just they, went to Dallas this weekend. And it's absolutely crazy. Well, that one, that, that, that one subdivision that we saw when we went to Baton Rouge. Yes. How many houses are they getting ready to have? Uh, right a there? bunch. And, and it's one or two companies that are building all these houses, and they're going to control all the housing. Right. And I, I don't like that. I like I, I don't have a problem if there's 10 companies doing it, but one company I don't like. I also grew up at a time that the government made Southwestern Bell break up. You know, I heard an interesting guy this morning when I was kind of diving into some of this. Um, the reason that the stock market is what it is, so it's a conglomerate, it's a conglomerate of, like, the big companies, right? But if you look at what happened when the baby boomers – grew up the era that they grew up in it was this big corporatization of america everything went to these big corporations the mom and pops kind of got phased out and that's when you got these companies well my generation is not that's why we're seeing like red lobster go out of business it's because my generation likes kind of that niche mom and pop feel to things we don't like going to big you don't like Red Lobster. You don't like franchises. Cheddar. We don't like franchises. That's what. Yeah, that's the word I'm trying to say. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when the stock market, as more and more generations grow up with that mindset of getting away from franchises. Huh? Oh, oh we, we don't can't even hear you. you. You're good. Okay. Yeah, yeah we you're can't good. hear nothing, Hunter. You're good. Thank you, bud. So the reason that you know everything got corporatized and baby boomers, you know, they love that. And that's why a lot of these stocks went up because consumers were using it. Now you've got your big players like Apple that everybody's on, Meta everybody's on. So there's going to be a couple stocks that I, I think are kind of bulletproof, if I should say. But some of these, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Well, the w one of the issues is is that all the companies are owned by two or three big companies, even in the restaurant right. business. Right. A lot of those big restaurants are owned by by 
that own big chains of restaurants. And, and, and there's a lot of money in food industry because look at the guy that owns the Houston Rockets. Yeah, so I, was, I saw his yacht. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did. And he owns Joe's Crab Shack, Landry's, Saltgrass, and probably a ton of other things. He owns some casinos, I think. But they got, got their money in the um, restaurant business. Yeah. The, the Papa's family that owns Papa Do's. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Lots and lots of money. Big time. Big money. And... But a lot of these other restaurants, I call I call them the sub franchises, and that's that's your Red Lobsters, your Olive Garden. Yeah, you know that's when you know you're poor growing up. When going to Olive Garden was a treat, <laughs> you know that was like, right. wow, we're going to go to Olive Garden tonight. You know, and I don't I don't like to eat at those places very often. And me and Mom talked with us the other day. We're we're we'd rather when we go to, to, to some place to go, we never eat at a franchise place. So you're more of my generation too. When it comes to eating out, I would much rather eat at a locally owned. Yeah. Even when I go to Abilene or Wichita Falls, Wichita Falls' food choices are terrible. It's all franchises. You go to Abilene, though, and it's not. Right. Abilene a lot, has lot a more, lot more locally owned yeah. places to eat. Copper Creek is my favorite place in Abilene, locally owned. And then all that area downtown that we go to all the time. Yeah. The pizza joint. Um, I can't remember the name of it. But Vagabond Pizza and all that stuff that we like to go to. All locally owned. And yes, I think that more people your generation are doing that. But we also we talked about this the other day. When I grew up, we didn't have the food choices y'all have today. It was all yeah. Well, well, even yeah. even the menus were completely different back then. Right. You look at a Taco Bell menu from 1990 to today, and it's completely different. Yeah, it's way too diverse. McDonald's same damn way. Mm-hmm. You know, McDonald's the best deal they got going is that five dollar bag. Five dollar meal. I tell you what, that's that's French fries. Chicken a nuggets. burger, and uh, yeah, you can either get a fillet of fish or chicken nuggets. Yeah, all for five dollars and a drink. They are they are recession. They're gearing up for recession, maybe. Oh, that's coming. You think so? Yes, I do. Well, um, the feds are going to do something today or tomorrow. They're going to try to take a half point off the the interest rate. Right. And I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a financial guy. Yeah, me neither. So, so I don't know what taking a half percent off does to and whatever. Well. One, I have heard that you're going to be able to buy a home more affordably now. Interest rates were 7%. They're thinking they're going to go down to 4 or 5 So if you've been holding on to waiting for interest rates to go down. You're borrowing $350,000 to buy a house at 5% interest. Yeah. That's a lot of money on interest every year. Well, this one guy, I can pull it up real quick. Um, so Dave Ramsey, who a lot of people, you can either you really love him or you really hate him because... So a lot of people say, you know, you follow the Dave Ramsey Ramsey method, you're going to get rich, but you're going to get rich really slow. So, and um, bored. And yeah, a very boring way to make your money to live. But um, let me see if I can find it because I know I pinned it. Uh, I think it's this one. Let me see. Uh, let me see if this is it forget the boomers had 13% interest rates in the 80s. I wish we had 13% interest rates today if that meant we had your home prices. In 1980, the median household income was 22000 and the median home price was $47,000. That was only oh, twice the yearly salary. And if you wanted to put down a 20% down payment and closing costs, it would cost you about $11,000, which is only half the yearly salary. So you have your 13% interest rates. Your monthly payment was $485 a month, which was only 26% of your gross income. Now, if we had the same setup that you did in the 80s, our median household income is $80,000. That means the house price would sit around $170,000. A 20% down payment closing cost would be $40,000. 13% interest rates would put our payment at $1,790 a month, which is 26% of our gross income. All would be well in the world. But here's our actual reality. Median household income, $80,000. The median home price in 2024 is $419,000, which is five times the salary. And if you wanted to put down 20% and closing costs, it would be $100,000, which is more than the actual yearly salary. Even though we have 7% interest rates, the payment out the door is still $28,000 hundred dollars a month which would eat away at 42 percent of our income and here's the kicker someone making eighty thousand dollars in most cases can't even qualify for this in fact i wouldn't even recommend anyone making 80 grand spend more than three hundred thousand dollars on a house because you don't want to be house poor that's that's not the video well that's common sense though what he's saying dave ramsey has a whole method to buying a house like how much you need to put down but that's the basic math and he explained it to you why why people can't afford stuff nowadays the cost overload is so much higher than what you're what you make. Oh, hundred. I mean, yeah. you just can't no, even. It can't come close to it. 
I mean, that's, uh, and we're, we're dealing with that people out here now. The problem in Knox City that we're finding is we're a very poor community, like a lot of small towns in the western part of the United States are. All right, here it is. Hold on. Ramsey shares his timely strategy for buying a house today, which I agree with, but it closes the door on so many Americans. So what do we do? First of all, he wants you to be debt free, which I agree with, and three to six months of living expenses saved. Then after that, let's go through the list. So in 2019, the average house was 260,000. He wants you to put down ideally 20%. So that would be $52,000. There was a 4% interest rate back in 2019, and he wants you to do a 15 year fixed rate, which is very smart, but more doable back then. That would be $1,539 and about 350 for property taxes and homeowner insurance would put your payment out the door at 1900. So what would you need to earn as a family to qualify for this home using Dave Ramsey's method? $60,000. What was the median household income in 2019? $68,000. So most people, if they worked hard and saved up their 52 k they could qualify if they were debt-free. Now let's move to 2024. Who's debt-free? 20% is $84,000. At a 7% interest rate, puts your payment at $3,026 for property taxes and insurance, puts you at $3,600. So what do you need to qualify for a $3,600 monthly payment? a hundred and ten thousand dollars what's the median household income in 2024 or at least late 2023 eighty five thousand dollars so the question becomes is it financially irresponsible for most americans to buy a house these days or do we need to change the method or are we all agreeing collectively and sadly that buying a house has now become a luxury that's the, the like i said that's the dave ramsey approach to buying a house you can agree with it. You can disagree with it. Like the debt free thing is hard for most Americans because I think uh, fucking I'd have to look up the credit card debt. But I think most Americans own or have, you know, they're in the hole quite a bit. Uh, credit card I don't debt. The, uh, but to Knox City. The yeah. problem we even in Knox City is, is the home prices have escalated like <clears throat> I know someone's buying a house right now that's a 1,300-square-foot house in Knox City for $72,000. Mm-hmm. Some people are like, well, that's cheap. Yeah, if you're living in Highland Park or San Francisco or something, that same house is going for six or 700000 Yes, it is. But the amount of money people make out here, that still, to me, is awful high for a house that you could have bought for $35,000 10 years ago. Right. Now it's double the price. The problem is someone like me that could sell my house for a whole lot more than that a bigger home, a lot bigger home, completely been redone, basically. So if I unloaded my house for three hundred thousand dollars for me to replace my home, it would cost me half a million bucks. Mm-hmm. Then we got people that move into town here that can't afford to buy a house because they they're, they cost too much. And there's not a lot of homes here. Rents a thousand dollars a month, right? When you're paying a thousand dollars a month rent and you're only making thirty six to forty thousand dollars a year, that's a bunch of freaking money. The average debt in America is $104,000. That includes mortgages, though. Well, that's that's not much compared to what a lot of... We so, talked about this in church Sunday. If you don't have nothing, $100,000 is a lot of money. Sure. But if you've got a half million <clears throat> dollars in stress and problems and you're worried about... We had a lady in church has has had some plumbing issues. And they talked about this in church. This is public stuff. So anyways... She was having problems. She had a $40 plumbing problem. She's on a fixed budget. She don't have no extra money. Right. Old retired lady. No social security. Make, probably making 800 a month in social security. And that's probably all she's, she's probably living on less than 1500 a month. Well, the time she pays her car payment, pays all her overtaxed shit she has and everything, she'll have no extra money left over. She mm-hmm. had a $40 leak. <coughs> well, <clears throat> a guy fixed it for $40 from the church. It was $800 plumbing issues what a guy quoted her to fix it. She didn't have it. She prayed on it, prayed on it. She, a lady at church asked her what was going on, and she told her she has problems. Her husband went and fixed it for $40. Well, she had $40 that could be fixed. She didn't have $800. And Tex was talking about people with stress, and he goes, but someone over here has got a $30,000 issue. It's a lot easier to find someone that can help you fix a four a forty dollar or a hundred dollar problem. Right. Somebody in this church will give you a hundred dollars to help you out. Sure. But you know how many people out there are gonna give you thirty thousand dollars if you've got thirty thousand dollars worth of problems? You can't. Right. Hundred thousand dollars, even less. And that's what he was talking about is money stress. He said the people that have big problems don't look down on people with small problems. But the people with small stress always look down on the guys with big stress above them. Like, well, damn, I wish I had a hundred thousand dollars, you know, and you right. don't. 
Yeah. And it, it was just interesting. But just talking about how tough things are financially for people right now. I mean, we have a big portion of our population is older people mm -hmm. that are retired. They lived on fixed incomes. Now, for people, a fixed income means they're going to get $2,500 a month, and that's it. <clears throat> they're not getting a raise. Is Social Security taxed? It, yes, but they're trying to. Trump's, Trump's make, trying to get Trump's rid of that. He's getting rid of that. No more taxes on Social Security and no more and no taxes on, on tips. tips. Which I, I report all of my tips anyways. Yeah, I know. You're a good guy. I'm a good guy. You know, I want to I want to pay my fair share. So all my tips are already reported. But but so hold on. Uh, back to social security. So are you ta are you taxed whenever you I haven't gotten I'm not old enough yet. No, no, no. When you take money out, when when I when the government is so nice and they set up this savings account for me called Social Security, am I taxed on the money that I give them? Oh, I'm sure you are. Like I'm getting taxed yeah, on the two hundred dollars or whatever that I'm giving them. Let's say you make a hundred thousand a year, just a hundred thousand right. a year flat deal. You're paying taxes on that, and then I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna, I, you know, I'm, I I'm gonna say get that. I don't know if they if they tax you on your social security. I don't know if they tax on gross or net. So when I get, reach the ripe age of whatever it's gonna be, and I get by access, eighty by the time you get old, when I get access to the savings account that they set up for me, and all my money's right there, and they start dripping this money back to me. I'm going to get taxed on that money. Unless, and Trump's, Trump's wanting to change that. But right now, my, right, my, now my, I'm pretty, my, right now, I'm pretty sure that you get taxed on it. My in, Well, I don't know why Trump would say we're going to end That's, the tax. So I'm sure you do. So That's, my in-laws, they get Social Security. Mm -hmm. That check that they get, they get taxed on that, that um, they've already, that's their money. Yes, they're getting taxed on their own money. Nice. It's kind of like a debit card. You go to use a debit card, and they charge you $3 to get your money. Mm -hmm. Now, I heard I heard a lady bitching about this one day. Her and her man were having a conversation. And she was on his ass about that. And that's a service fee that the bank charges. Convenience. If fee. you don't if you don't want that, go to the bank before you go to the casino or you go out at night or whatever right. you do and get the cash you need so <clears throat> you don't have to use that debit card. Right. Somebody is filling a machine up with money. To take your money out. So I don't have a problem paying that $3 fee. Where I have a problem with is the bank charging me for doing things that bankers should do. And all banks do it. They charge you a fee to send you your report at the end of the month. <laughs> they charge you uh, if you sweep money from one account to another account. Right. You know, I think ours is if, if I don't have enough money in our checking account, they sweep it out of our savings to cover what it is. And I think they charge me a dollar. And it's not like they're taking that physically taking that Fuck money. No, and moving it's it all from on a computer right, doing yeah, all yeah, of yeah. it. You, you did the legwork. Yeah, that dollar should be there. And then if right. you keep a balance over so much in your checking account, they don't have a service fee at the end of the month. Right. But if you have less than that, then right. they charge you $5 a month for it yeah. or something. But if you got it in your savings account, it doesn't. It's all the banking shit. When's the last time a bank's went out of business? The ones in California, I guess. But, I mean, banks don't. It's kind of like colleges. You don't hear about a college going insolvent. It will be after lunch. I text Steve. No, no, you never do. You know, and, and they just charge, overcharge, 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 build more buildings, and build, have less parking lots. Right. At every college in America right now. Nowhere to park. No. No, nowhere. And but that's their whole deal. All right, let's talk about some things in the world. That so, are hold on. on. Average, okay. average, 44% of Americans cannot... Get their hands on a thousand dollars if they had an emergency today. No, I can believe that. The average <laughs> debt, not including mortgages, is twenty three thousand dollars. That's credit card, student loan, auto payment, personal loan debt. Twenty three k is the average American. Well, I would take that. So, if you're gonna go by the Dave Ramsey method, pay all your shit off, and uh, I've known a lot of people that's done Dave Ramsey. And I've never known any of them that have very many smiles on their face. <laughs> it's pretty grueling. It looks very. It looks like a miserable way to live. I'm telling you right now. But his story is he, he you know, he was over overextended and went broke and bankrupt and all that other stuff, and then he just. I'm not spending money on anything. So, that's the day. That's why you think Dave, Dave Ramsey, Ramsey spends money now. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because people are paying him so much a month. Right. To, to, to get to, out of debt. Listen, I, I'm i just sad I didn't think of it first. You oh. want you want to know the way to have money? Don't spend any. Yeah. I mean, that's basically all he says. 
And if you want to find someone that's on Dave Ramsey, you go somewhere and you watch fuckers pulling cash out of envelope for everything they do. <laughs> sure. And you look at them buying the cheapest shit on the menu. They're miserable. They buy the cheapest fucking car there is. If someone goes to a dealership and they say, hey, I want to buy a car that's got roll-up windows, no air conditioner, got to have a heater. That's what we want. The cheapest shit, rubber floorboards, everything else. And that person's going to say, I bet you're a Dave Ramsey person. But apparently, I mean, as big as he is and as many people as listen, and my wife is one of them that listens to him. And like she, you know, she's always, uh, anytime she's laying in bed at night, it's it's just Dave Ramsey stuff. And it's interesting to hear kind of the, some of the stories, you know, that's where parents and schools are lacking is there is not a financial accountability class. If there was, Dave Ramsey wouldn't be in business. Yeah, I agree. you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not knocking anybody that 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 does the Dave Ramsey approach. He's worked for a lot of people. Um, it has, but, and you and you got to understand kind of where he came from and why he is the way that he is. I mean, he was broke. I'm not so. knocking anybody that done his deal. I'm just right. telling you, you can find him in a crowd, right? Because they all look the same. Everyone I know that's done it's went through that thing, and there's he's probably helped a lot of people. But, you know, when I was in high school, we had a thing called business math. Yeah, we don't have that anymore. And we learned how to balance a checking account and basic math, just normal shit. But they need to teach that. They also need to teach people how to change a tire. Yeah. I would say change your oil on your car, but they've fixed that where you can't do that shit anymore. It's just a matter of time where you won't even be able to fix your own flat. Right. Oh, yeah. They'll have some way of figuring that out where you can't do it. And Have you seen the video where the, guy, the lady goes in and comes out? Or tells her husband that don't worry about the car. She she got that good air when she went to the yeah the premium air yeah the premium at Pet Boys. He's like, what are you talking about? She goes, I bought the premium air fifty dollars worth of air yeah, and he's like, what 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 are you talking about? And right. she done the fifty dollar deal. Have you seen the video before I get into the other stuff going on? Have you seen the video of the lady at the wedding and her uh, the guy picks her up to throw her up in the crowd? She's a bridesmaid hmm. and her tits come out. Oh man, I mean, nice natural knockers knockers too but yeah. he do, he picks her up and then he's spinning her around he doesn't know her boobs are out oh no and he's spinning her and, the, and the bride's coming over and they're trying to put a blanket on top of her funny shit um let's talk politics now Uh oh. do you think kamala's going to be the democratic nominee i do yes and dep- we talked about this earlier. i don't know what polls to believe i saw a poll earlier that kamala leads trump i've seen where trump is up like 20 or 30 points in wisconsin pennsylvania ohio florida they haven't gotten any bump with kamala at all if you get a true a true poll you're not getting any kind of bumps at all right i mean i saw one poll and it said kamala's went in two percent and then i looked down at the right. people it was 80 people in the san francisco areas where they took the poll well yeah she's gonna win that not one time have I been asked my opinion on a poll. N- never. Not once. I, I, as bad as things are right now in this <clears> country, <throat> I can't imagine that there's that many people that are excited to go vote for Kamala Harris. But I would if so. Here's the deal: if I were called today and said, "Hey, we want you to take part in the Quinnipiac poll, whatever poll, the go jack off around the corner poll," I would tell them Kamala because I want them to get comfortable. Oh well, that you know what I mean. Yeah, you can't. In, in, in a real poll, I think Trump's winning easily. I think Trump easily wins the presidency. Your boy RFK Jr. pulled a Christy Nome. What did he do? Well, he's talking trying about to hitting get, the bear. He didn't hit it. He picked it he up picked on the side of the road. Right, right, right. Threatened us to be hickle. That's a great story. It, it, it is. But for the people that he, the 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 bunny huggers on that side. Ah, fuck them. I mean, well, he, he's but, done more for the environment. I mean, he, he I, single-handedly fucking made the Hudson River clean again i'm not i'm not knocking him for what he done i'm just saying it's it, a funny it's, story it's been it's not good optics for him though so if and you haven't doing heard it because it, the new yorker magazine was going to do a story on and it. how did they even get that he i mean is this an older story had he Ten told years ago had he told somebody before like how did the new yorker get the goods on this i'm sure somebody somewhere is digging why that it was him why do everybody think kamala's uh husband now raped his nanny so rfk he's up he's going to upstate new york to go falcon hunting which he's a big falconer, sees a bear that had been hit on the side of the road, puts it in his van. They do the falcon hunt, have have success. He had a, like a dinner or something he had to go to back in the city. He had plans on taking it back to his house, caping it out, and storing some of the meat. It, none of, none of, it wasn't dismantled from the car accident. Well, the night runs on, and he's got a flight to catch the next day. So he's like, what am I going to do? I got this bear in the back of my van. 
So he goes to he goes to Central Park, puts it in Central Park, and they get a bike and they put it like by the bear. And New York press and cops and everybody just runs with it that this bear got ran over by this bike and killed and their crime scene tapes everywhere. So that's the bear story with RFK. Could you imagine if you're in Central Park and there's a, a yeah, dismantled I mean, I've bike? I've been to Central Park multiple times and there's yeah. not much of a place for a bear to be. I mean, you, you're surrounded by concrete jungle. Right. So I understand why, you know, there's, he said like there's helicopters flying above and they got yellow police tape everywhere and it all because of this joke that they played on it. He didn't think that it would take off the way that it did. But well, he didn't think he was going to run for president one day. Like he's, he has said before, he said, if all the skeletons in my closet could vote, I would win the presidency easily. So I don't really have a problem with it. I think it's a funny story. I don't have the bear was with... ar- The bear was already dead. So he, he you know, his, he was going to try to salvage a little bit of it. And, and by law, he's time. allowed to do that. He, he went and got that. a bear. He went and got a bear tag. And yeah, I mean, he done everything legal. He right. didn't do anything wrong on the right. deal other than the wanton waste, but it was already dead to put it right. in the park. Littering, wanton waste, whatever. It's a funny story. The, the problem is, though, is the people that vote for him. There's a big portion of those people that are bunny huggers. Oh, trust me, I made a I made a video of Clay Reed talking about that horse getting set on fire. And every once in a while, I'll see some comments come across oh, my yeah, phone. People are not happy. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! If you think that's funny, we should light you on fire. Um, Did you see the one comment where the guy said that he'd like to meet that guy one on one? He'd take care of him. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> that might be shit. We can do paper. It wasn't even Clay Reed. It was Clay Reed telling a story right. of somebody in his in, in his area. Like no. he didn't set the fucking thing on fire. He heard the story at the at the at the cafe. So, trust me, I understand all too well the uh, the bunny hugger aspect because my phone, uh, I think it's at like eight, almost a million views on Facebook and two hundred thousand on TikTok and couple hundred thousand on Instagram. Comments are quite nasty. So if you want some entertainment, just go read through some of those comments. Hey, speaking of uh, guys wanting to, guy wanting to whip Clay's ass, mm. I watched Redneck Brawl pay-per-view on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. We are remodeling. Our house is in disarray, and it is absolutely miserable there right now. Right. And I saw this pay-per-view, and I had been seeing it advertised, so I went and bought it. $20. The best $20 entertainment I have bought in years. Is it bare knuckles or is it boxing No, ones? it's boxing. But okay. me and you should get to announce this thing. Mm. It is fucking awesome. I'm telling you, if you took... I don't know what I would be more proud of. If my daughter is one of the ring girls or my daughter was one of the girl fighters. I got to tell you, Jeff, that's not my crowd. Oh, it, it would not be. You would be uncomfortable, but you oh, would yeah. laugh. You would laugh so hard at these people. One guy tore his ACL. Mm. Another guy had a heart attack after oh, he God. fought. Uh, what's his name fought? Who was the guy that was the announcer? Catfish Cooley. Oh, he fought, He huh? fought. He, he was the last fight of the night. Damn. And the, the only embarrassing thing that made me cringe was Catfish Cooley has, it announces this. They've like three or four of these a year. He does. He announces them with a couple of buddies of his. Mm-hmm. His buddies... One of them was the biggest twat waffle I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm just, God, this I just can't handle this right now with Cat <laughs> fighting out there. I mean, just, God, what if something happens? You have watched 29 fights. He was the 30th fight of the night. And you're worried. Nobody's gotten hurt bad. One guy got knocked out, and that was it. Yeah, I don't think they have the uh, cardio to no, really, not, really they, get hurt. One minute the heart, rounds. The heart attack is going to be what you got to worry one about. One minute rounds. One guy weighed 480 pounds. Mm. Let me tell you something about the big fat boys. I don't give a shit how big they are. They can't move. Right. A guy that's 480 pounds fighting a guy that weighs 300 pounds, a 300 guy's got such an advantage over him. Now, it's not like a 150-pound guy fighting a 200-pound guy because the power will get him. But it was an enjoyable, if you like to make fun of people and be redneck shit, that it, it, it was a good time. Here is... This is a year old, but it's toothless hillbilly eats ruthless cheap shot. Redneck brawl. So let's. There he is. Hillbilly power. I handle people's shit all day. Let's see if you can give me some of the shit I'm going to give you. All right. Crazy bird, your name really should have been Tweaky Bird coming around with all them fucking chainsaws and shit. Oh, shit. All right, we got a little bit of shit talking. Motherfucking shit. Well, guess what? This ain't no Tweaky Bird. This is motherfucking Crazy Bird. Barstool does this, huh? They put this on. See all over. He just herky jerky. 
Uh-oh. Crowd All is right, up here on we their we got, feet for Crazy Bird, a local We got legend. Crazy Bird and we got Plumber. Crazy Bird. Oh, fucking haymakers. Here Crazy they come. Bird is crazy all over. He just herky jerky. <laughs> it's just three hours of this. Oh, it was great. 30 fights. Wow. <laughs> Here they go. Oh, a little bit of a low blow. <laughs> a lot of punches. Nothing's landed. Crazy. Yeah, he does. Unleash that. Oh, he's popped. He's fucked. <laughs> his, Toothless hillbilly. His hand's caught in the ring, too. Yeah, let him. <laughs> Check out them socks and shoes. Oh, yeah. That's his lawn mowing shoes. Oh, yeah. Oh, he can't do that. That's the back of the head. Back of the head. Fuck, he's still crazy, isn't he? See if he can go to where he gets knocked out here. Does he? I don't know that he does. Uh oh. Possibly driving for Uber. Said he's out. Done. Crazy Bird said no more. But it was three hours of this. It was funny. I laughed so hard. I mean, it was a funny, funny, funny deal. It was the whole time it was that way. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, let's wonder which one has the most views. We'll just watch that. Uh, this one's got 450,000 views. So I'm going to say let's try it. Man, and bear pig. Pig comes in this time with the same shorts that Naruto. I don't know if y'all know what Naruto is. Nothing but sheer calm, confidence in the he- man. Here we each go. other for sure but look out look out look 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 you got one that's wound up one that's comfortable in there he looks well, like i he... mean a sawmill should be wound up <laughs> here we go here we we're gonna go. see oh my fucking see God. see he's so smart <laughs> he's protecting himself yep, yep. let he's the so guy smart. get worn down look he's so smart he's so smart because he knows he knows that's all he's got to do for fucking one round and then <laughs> second round he's gonna fuck him up he's gonna fuck yeah, him up boy he's hard too Oh, Look, so see? Catfish Cooley is a is an announcer. Yeah, he announced and fought and fought. I, he's gonna he's gonna blow his gasket in the first I round. I don't. I, yep. I hope, I hope, that, so, I hope that sawmill can keep running. See, Bear Pig, he knows. I just don't think three one minute rounds gonna be long enough for these. Oh, I got kicked him kind of. I don't know. Oh, hey. the way he's jumping around, he's gonna blow that gasket. Watch. He's already starting. I'm seeing it. Yeah, I hate that for him. He's tired. I wish he'd come in a little bit more control. Man, he tried hard right out the gate. Which is one of them tactics? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right oh. in the back of the ear. <laughs> Don't let up. Don't let up. That's the first one. Don't That's let up. The first one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. oh. He, about, he about went and got a corn dog right there. Man Bear Pig is a fucking athlete, boy. But he, he, can't, but he, he can't go to his ring because he can't go to his corner right now. Man Bear Pig is a bad motherfucker, boy. He boys. is a bo- Let's see if they go to round two. He is so zen, bro. Yeah, they do. Wearing that shit? Fuck no. <laughs> oh, we got some more right Look here. See, he's, he, he's still coming in. The oh. sawmill's running strong. Yeah. Yes, he he's is. He's sticking to his first tactic. But, and but then, Man Bear Pig is blocking. Yeah. By the, by the end of the round. Waiting for his moment. Waiting yeah. for his moment. By the end of the round. I think Man Bear Pig it. can definitely take Switch a punch. Switch stance. Too. Yeah. Oh, they both can. They both can take a punch. All right. Sawmill's wearing Man down. <laughs> Hey, he just, he's Ooh, smart. that one hurt. Look at him. You see what just hit that liver? That liver's wide open, son. Yeah. Yep. If he just got that liver shot in, you don't understand what that feels like. It, it's rough. There Shut it is. Shut your fucking body down. He's hitting him with them liver shots. I'd he's get him in the, he's got to get him on the side. Yeah. I'd about rather get hit in the face than in the fucking liver. Look at him. He's got, oh, my God. Oof. Whoa, whoa, oh my God. whoa. Oh, my God. Yeah, we, we may see a fucking knockout. Yeah. No, they go to round three. He's got a lot to prove. Yes, he does. He's been training people. He's giving them somebody to look up to. Hey, that's some good jabs there. <laughs> great responsibility. Fast forward a little bit. Is he left-handed? No, oh, sawmill's oh. hurting. <laughs> sawmill's got that Boom. mouthpiece that out. Right oh the that one was right in the temple. That was a hard hook. There's my man. That go, body, boy, go. Baby, that body. Go, baby, go. He's done. 
He's done. He's done. I think this one goes that's to Man Bear. But anyways, that's, that, that that's was, redneck boxing. It was redneck. It was great. I loved it. It was the best 20 bucks I'd spent in a long time. There's a lot of. A lot of shit talking guys. Some guys that come out on fire. A lot of guys are out of shape. Yeah. A lot of guys are out of shape. You can tell most of them don't know how to fight. Right. You find a guy that can really punch makes a big difference at all, but they talk like shit. The trashy women is what's hilarious about the whole thing. And then listen to the announcers talk about the ring girls that come through there. Mm-hmm. Oof, pretty rough. Um, good time, though. <clears throat> a, good, a, a really enjoyable Saturday night by, by my account. Well, that, you know, that's all you gotta, all you gotta do. I, I, I enjoyed it. Mom was baking. We were listening to it and watched. She listened and watched it, and she got a lot of giggles out of all the comments going on by the announcers. But it was, it was, it was an interesting, interesting time. And I don't know what they were paying the people that fought. Probably not very much. Hang on a second. I got You know, I remember the first time that I did jujitsu, and I landed the most beautiful. Double leg takedown that you will ever see. I mean, it looked like out of a fucking movie. I just hit it. Perfect. Perfect form, everything. I was so fucking shot after that. I had nothing left. Like I used I used every bit of energy that I had to get that to get that takedown. And then it was gone. So, you know, those guys shooting their load like that, it's a real thing. Especially I couldn't imagine like doing it in front of a crowd. And just wanting to throw haymakers, but that's the thing is just put your put your fucking hands up. Let the let your other guy tire himself out because those gloves are heavy. I mean, how long how long could you put on? And I don't know how heavy those gloves are, but what what weight they are. But you know, put twelve ounces on your hands or whatever, and just go punch as many times as you can. You good for what thirty seconds? Maybe keep your hands up and then just pick, pick your shots after that. But that's the thing. People, people think they got a better gas tank than they have a lot of times. Well, Tony talked about that from when he did that, and he had to do three-minute rounds. Three, 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 minute, three rounds, minute rounds. Like regular boxing. And he said that by the time they got to round three. You can't even pick your arms up. No, he said it was dead. Mm-hmm. He said, luckily, I had done so much work the first round. Right. They didn't have to do it, but he goes, he was. He said, I was so glad when that last bell rang. He oh, said, it's the hardest yeah. thing he ever done in his life. 100%. And there's a lot of guys that. They got to be in shape. We we saw we you know we went to the circuses last weekend. Barnum and Bailey's did like the Cirque du Soleil thing, but still, you still had that that regular circus crowd. Uh, you know, I don't what know. is a regular circus crowd? <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. No, I'm, I'm wanting to hear this because like you're fucking, gonna come off like, snobby, like, like the like the toothless. Uh, so you said there's a lot of meth heads and stuff there. They were there, but I think a lot of people uh, had. There was a mixture of everything. Where was it at? <clears throat> the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth. Did you see Justin? Justin who? Poe. I did not. He's in charge of all those two. The meal. He's a he's in charge. Of, he's a chef there. Well, it was all circus stuff. food, Jeff. So if he's making cotton candy, I don't. Him, if he's him, making anything more than cotton candy, I don't think he was working. They have that all day. kinds of things they do there. But he was. He's in charge of all that. But like there was there was your regular like carnival county fair crowd that was there. And then there was people that had been to Vegas and seen the Cirque du Soleil show, like like we had. Um, there was a there was a mixture of people, so the crowd watching was was something else. Sounds to me like there's a whole lot of rednecks there. There were there were rednecks, but I mean there were definitely professionals there. Uh, How would you consider yourself? Are you and Jesse in the professional deal or the rednecks? Uh, definitely not. I'm not a redneck. No. So you were no. You were a blue belt compared to these people. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, so you look down on some of these people. I didn't look down. I'm just not a redneck. I, I don't. I, that's just not me. It's not my style. I, I mean, if you're a redneck, that's fine. But uh, it was an it was an interesting uh, it was an interesting take because you did have so many. So, so many it was good crowd things. watching. Oh yeah, good crowd watching. Um, was the circus like? Do they have elephants and stuff? They don't do that no more. It was just Cirque du Soleil like that. Well, that's like in a high dollar Vegas deal. That's what I mean. So it was not like a. a Barnum and Bailey and Ringlingsboro they put it on, but it's like the Cirque du Soleil act. Because I think they got rid of all their animals. I'm sure. I think with, all the PETA people. With, with the way it is. I had to throw away my fucking knife. Huh? Walking into the Dickies Arena. Well, yeah, you can't take a knife to nowhere like that no more. A fucking pocket knife? Yeah. So me and the kid had a little bit of words. You and the kid? Yeah, the fucking guy that wanted me. What'd you say to him? I said, what if I need this? What if I need it? Did he say you could come back and get it? Oh, no. No. You They're, said throw it away. Throw it away. Trash can right there. 
I said, this is what's wrong with America. You can't even carry a pocket knife anymore. I he, said, it's a pocket knife. He says, I just work here. Yeah, I mean, I was bitching to the wrong kid, obviously. But walk in and Reese, a rule follower, they come over the loudspeaker. <laughs> no, no pot. You're going to go through a metal detector. No pot, no weapons of any kind, pocket knives included, blah, blah, blah. The line to get into this fucking place is ridiculous. It's 110 degrees. We're in the sun. It's concrete everywhere. I'm not going back to the car because of how far I had to park. So I'm not going to take it back. I'm like, fuck it. Like, I'll, uh, it's whatever. It's a $50 knife. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll bullshit my way through. That's what I would have tried to do. Didn't work. Beeper goes off. And I was like, fuck. And Reese is like, all <laughs> wide eyed. Dad, what are you going to do? I'm like, it's a, it's a pocket knife. He's like, doesn't matter. It's got to go. <laughs> I said, it's a pocket knife. Like, we're in Texas, right? Most people here have knives on them. Not here, they don't. Not in the Dickies Arena. He's like, you can throw it away or you can go back to the car. I'm like, I'm not going back to the car. It's not It's not happening. He's like, well, I guess you can throw it away. And I was like, well, what if I need it? Well, there's plenty of police around. Well, there's second responders. If I need it, I need it then. I don't need to try to get a cop. Did you really think this kid was going to let you in? I mean, you honestly thought that these answers, this was kid hoping. was going to be like, oh, I was okay, hoping. we trust you. I was hoping. But Billy Bob over there that's got the 8-inch <clears throat> knife in his boot, yeah, no, we don't he, trust that, him. That, that Bowie knife's got to go, <clears throat> but my little pocket knife, it's got to, I, I should be able to take it with me. What if what if I get a splinter in the you middle of this? You don't see all this shit going on in London right now? Oh, Jeff. I'm a Texan. I'm not a, I'm not a London guy. I'm a Texan. You're I'm, not worried about a Muslim coming and stabbing you? No. Well, obviously, you are not. You don't have to at Dickies because they take your fucking knife, a little bitty pocket knife. <laughs> They'll take it away. I was appalled. I said, this is what's wrong with America. Men can't even carry pocket knives anymore. I'm, I'm, can't, and you I'm, know can't, what he told me I there? Can't, I can't debate that. But you know ahead. what he said there? No. The trash can's right there. Or you can go back out. Right in the trash can. Fucking walked off. What was your wife saying to you? Nothing. It was so loud in there, she couldn't really hear me. Was Reese impressed with your manly no, on this deal? No, Reese was, I think he was kind of embarrassed. Because he knew it was going to happen. <laughs> and I knew it was going to happen, too, but I was just like, you, you know. You hoping half, they wouldn't catch you in the lawn. Half the time, the, you know, yeah. She just stuck it in your shoe. You got to walk through the metal detector, Jeff. I almost said I had a, a fake hip. But I think you got to carry a card or something around to, like, let these people know <laughs> if you've got metal in you. And I didn't definitely didn't have that. <laughs> the pussification of America on display right there at the Dickies Arena. No pocket knives. Fuck off. I saw, men can't even be men. I saw an old man in Cancun one time at the airport. The same thing happened to him. And he was it was his grandfather's pocket Ob knife. Obviously, if 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 this knife had like sentimental value or family heirloom, I would have walked back to the car. Well, this guy here didn't have an opportunity because he was in Cancun. He goes. I flew down here with it with me. Right. Yeah, that's shitty. That sucks. That, that guy goes, well, they should have caught that on the other end. Yeah, America, TSA is awful. He goes, well, what can I do? He said, you can throw it away. Mm -hmm. You can go to town and mail it. And so he found a cabbie, I think, and gave the guy a $100 bill and asked him to do it. I don't know if he ever got his watch well, back. I hope he got his knife back. Knife back but. And then we went to the new Rangers ball ballpark. They check you for a knife there, too? Oh, I didn't even try. Well, my knife was gone. I only <laughs> took one. Did you have to go through a metal detector there, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Isn't it absolutely crazy that we have to go through metal detectors for everything you do nowadays? Yep, everything. Uh, it was a nice stadium. Got to see the Red Sox play. Knew nobody on the field at all. Jameson threw up nachos in the third inning. And, uh, yeah, that was our Rangers experience. You know, Kevin, nice, nice, nice stadium, though. Good friend of ours gave you some tickets. Very good. And they go all the tickets. time. Yeah. I bet he goes 50 games a year. I don't know how he does that. Wow. Uh, too much, too big of a crowd for me. It was fun though. Boy, Reese had a good time. Jameson slept for most of it, and then threw up nachos when he woke up. So, was the air conditioning? It's nice, comfortable there. It's not still hot. It's still hot. I was wondering about. I that. I mean, yeah, it's still hot. Like I went to an Astros game back in the Astrodome, so that would have been in the early nineties. Yeah, and it was very comfortable. Right. It was. It was like going to a bank or something. But you know they do. They do. Ollie Hush. They do a lot for kids. It, I guess on Sundays, the kids can run the bases after the game if you want to stick around. We did not because of the throw-up incident. But, um, you know, they do a lot for kids there. So it was a it was a nice family environment. Not like – it was a different – it was different. Like, I don't know. No fights in the crowd like I'm kind of a – you know, I've seen before. Uh, beer was only like 12 bucks, so not terrible. They give you the <laughs> tall boys. 
it's that's almost, not, it's twelve dollars like, isn't high. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna buy. Uh, I'm not gonna buy ten of them. I'm buy one or two, and that's gonna be it. Saw a guy because <clears throat> we were on the third baseline. Foul ball comes over us. Uh, my wife and Jamison are asleep next to me, so she's defenseless if a foul, foul ball comes. She's asleep too? No, no, she's awake, oh. but I mean, she's got a kid in her arm, so what's she going to do? So I stand up to block this thing. Luckily, it goes behind us. Guy just full beer, peanuts right there. I don't know what he was doing. He, he tried like, to catch it in his he beer? He tried to catch it with the cup of beer that's just this <laughs> plastic piece of shit, and it explodes and goes everywhere. His peanuts, I don't know how much he paid for the peanuts, but they scatter. So he, so he lost 20 bucks. Oh, yeah. Gone in an instant. <laughs> Gone in an instant. And then he looks confused like, oh, I can't believe this cup didn't hold up. Fuck, are you, what are you doing here? That's nuts. So then I, I go, Jameson's throwing, Jameson. He threw up the one time. He was complaining that he was still sick. So Jesse says, go get a cup. It's a concession stand. That way, if he needs to throw up again, we got something to They don't give it. you cups? No. <laughs> 12 bucks. They don't give you. You got to buy something. If you want a cup. <laughs> it's a it's a two-cent piece of plastic. And you can't give me one? Well, no, because two cents is worth $12. Fuck them. They know if they have 100 cups, they're making $1,200. I don't know how much that new stadium costs. They could afford to give me a fucking cup. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that's the way they look at it. That's their counting. I knew when you told me that what was going to happen. Couldn't give you. A, I can't give you a cup. So did you have to buy something to get one? Yes. What'd you buy? I bought uh, Jesse a seltzer, a Bud Light seltzer. So so, can I can I have a cup? Yeah, sure. Perfect. Great. Oh, so you bought her a Bud Light seltzer, and then she just drank it out of the can, and then you had the cup. Yeah, and then I had the throw up cup. Oh, that's that's nuts. That's crazy. It's interesting, but I'm not surprised. You're not surprised. No. That's, that's why when you told me that, I knew you were not going to get it What's wrong with free. America? That I I'm got not a, shocked I, by I got it? a kid that's throwing up on, on a row eight, and I can't get anything to contain it with without having to spend $15 or 10 or whatever it is on a Bud Light Seltzer. If he'd have thrown up all over the stands and a bunch of people, then they'd have shut the whole thing down. and Should have given me a cup. That part I agree with you on. But they're not going to. I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not, not surprised. I'm not going to feel sorry for you because, you know, he threw up everywhere. I tried to do the responsible thing and get a vessel to contain his throw up. What's funny is uh, Ward, Hegler, Ward Hegler was there. We had him on about a year and a half ago. He said his kid was freaking out. So he was walking right behind us the whole time. I never saw him. He never saw me either. But I posted that picture on my Instagram and he said, Are you on the, were you on the third baseline? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, my kid was freaking out for most of the game. So I was trying to console her and I was pacing back and forth. He's like, I never saw you though. I'm like, well, we had about half a dozen trips to the bathroom because he said he was going to throw up. Kevin's seats are in a great spot though, because you're the, it's, it's eight rows and you're the very last row. So if you need to make a hasty exit, you just right over the, right over the seats and the aisle is right there to go up. So it worked out well for having a pukey kid. They, uh, Anytime anybody hits a home run, fireworks go off inside of this thing. Poor Jameson's asleep. Josh Young hits one. Is it Young or how do you pronounce it? You name? got. I don't have a clue. I don't. I haven't watched a Ranger game in well, it's Texas, three years. It's a Tech kid. I think I it's Young. Don't, I, I think it's Young. J U N G. Josh Young takes it yard. Fucking boom! Big old fireworks everywhere. And I'm pissed as a dad because you know you got your son throwing up. Feeling puking. Yeah, you know, most people would leave the game. And he was, he's home. asleep, and now we got these fucking fireworks. Why, going that's because most people would say, "Well, why don't you take your son home if he's sick?" Sons of bitches. Well, that's what they would have said to you. He that's said, what I would have said. He had too much circus food. If you'd have come to me and said, "Listen, my son is sick up here. These don't fireworks hide, don't are waking him up." Fireworks. I'd be like, "Why do you have your son that's sick at a baseball game? <laughs> what kind of parent are you?" I'm just bitching. That's what I would have said to you. That would have been the responsible thing, but you know. Hold on, my contractor's calling me. So anyway, so anyway, it was a great weekend. Fireworks could have been a little bit, you know, calmer, quieter. a little bit quieter. Maybe next time we go, uh, and my kids throwing up, the fireworks will be a little bit quieter and not as disturbing. But it was a great atmosphere. Um, I've not been to the new Rangers uh, stadium. It's definitely a lot cooler than the old one. Sitting out, baking in a hundred and ten degree Texas heat, but um, it was fun. Kids well, had a good time. <clears throat> Even Jamin, like. I don't know. You know how kids are whenever they have an upset stomach. Yeah. We got home and he was running around riding his bike. So, well, that's good. They're then. resilient little bastards. Well, I, 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 I think it was too much junk at the circus and then you know funnel cakes and all the other shit at 
the Rangers game. But they got a good thing going on down there. All right, now let's talk about what's going on in the world. Okay. We have avoided that mostly, but we're going to talk about it. Um, Kamala Harris, I read this morning, is the Dems have have made their – got their down to three choices for a vice president. Uh, I thought she already picked. No, she has Arizona dude. No, she hasn't picked nobody oh, Okay. Yet. The Arizona guy is one of them. Uh, the Shapiro guy, Pennsylvania, and whoever the governor of Minnesota is. Now, I understand them wanting to get the Minnesota governor because they're probably going to lose Minnesota anyways. Right. I understand them wanting Pennsylvania because they're going to lose Pennsylvania probably, so they think that that'll help prop them up. The Arizona deal, I don't understand that guy at all. But I find it funny that the Democrats have chosen it down to three. Shouldn't she be the one picking who she wants to be her vice president? I mean, in a Trump real, didn't well, wait for the Republican Party to tell him who to take. Not that we know of. Right. Was there backdoor deals of the Republican Party that, th- hey, this is your guy? I, I don't know. but Play it off? But I, it so. came out that she w- that the Dems had chosen their down to three picks. Now, first of all, if you're a Democratic voter, you ain't had say-so in shit in the last two elections. Right. Because, or actually the last three, it will be the, this will be the third election. <clears throat> Bernie Sanders caved in to Hillary. In 16. And he had a chance to win that. Mm-hmm. He never wanted to talk about the emails and all the shit that was bad about her, and he cost himself. He He's a big pussy anyways. We mm-hmm. all know that. Right. Then in 2020, Bernie, Pocahontas, and gay Mayor Pete all were beating Biden. Right. And they all three quit the same time. Right. Because the Democratic and the deep state said, you need to get out. We're going to make it Joe Biden because we can control him and he can cheat. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kamala's on the same track. Same deal. Kamala can't win. They're gonna have to really cheat to get her to win. She don't have a chance. That they, they people don't. don't did you know, see man. the damn Meg the Stallion that deal that they had that concert? Yeah. The shit well, she I talked didn't. about. There ain't no way a presidential candidate's gonna have someone do that kind of crap in a legit election. Right. And then when she left, the crowd left. Nobody's there to see Kamala. Kamala doesn't excite black people. Right. You know. And so that and that, that whole thing's a farce, anyways. I don't think she's got a chance in hell. Um, the, she's got real baggage with Shapiro. Now Shapiro come out and said that he, I think he fought and volunteered for the Israeli Defense Fund or whatever the hell they call those people, the IDF, for Defense Forces. Okay, so he's pro-Israel. And he fought against the Muslims. This is a Democrat. Okay. They've got to win Michigan and they got to win Minnesota. Right. <clears throat> they got him as a damn VP pick. Those Muslims aren't going to vote for them. Right? Yeah. So so that 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 cost them on his pick already. The free Palestine movement. Yes. Is not going to be is, is going to be against them. And he, even her wanting to pick him, they've 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 alienated those people. Right. So it's such a screwed up deal. The whole election process is screwed up on the Democratic side. The people ain't had a say in it. And they're just going to prop somebody up. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> I have a real problem the more and more I listen to this assassination attempt on Trump to think that that kid was by himself. I don't I don't think he was I don't think he was a lone wolf. I think that he was involved. I've seen things where they said, "Oh, there's money in these accounts in Switzerland." I don't know if any of that's true or not. Or, or what are you saying? You're saying um, he had help on the back end or there was more than one shooter? I don't know that there was more than one shooter. He had help on the back end. Oh, yeah, now, I definitely agree with that. Now, there's picture of him with the prosecuting lady, Fanny, Fanny, the lady from New York. What's her name? I don't know. The lady that was prosecuting Trump. Oh, uh, Fanny Willis? Yeah, Fanny Willis. There's pictures with him with Fanny Willis. Now, I mean, just average 18 year old kids got pictures of somebody with her. Right. He was in a commercial for BlackRock. Right. And he's just too coincidental on some things. Well, I mean, I think I had read the, where somebody from. One of the Defense Department three-letter agencies, their cell phone pinged at his house, or maybe I've got that no, backwards. No, his, uh, phone, his pinged phone pinged at Langley. At or something? Langley, yes. And it might not be the FBI, but one of those three, one of those out. Yeah, it, in Washington D.C. somewhere, right. FBI headquarters, his right. phone got pinged there. Right. There's there's too much weird shit going on now. Yeah. I'm not saying that he didn't have someone come to him, and uh, this I'm not saying this. I'm not saying that someone come to him. And they named him Delta Force Zebra or some shit, and he mm-hmm. had some code name, and they put him out, and it was a deal. I think what they did was they took away all Secret Service detail, hoping someone was going to pop Trump. 
<clears throat> and turned their other way. I'm not saying that they had this plan that this kid was their guy. I don't know that much. But I think they stood down. They did everything they could to make it accessible for someone to assassinate Trump. Well, I mean, an hour before, Secret Service is texting one another like, hey, there's a, a watch over here. This virtual adventures. He's got a backpack and he's got now we see him with a ladder and, you know, all this other shit. So definitely a lot of oversight. I don't think that in that regard, I definitely don't think that he acted alone. I don't think he went and just said, I'm this is the day I'm going to go do this. And nobody knows about it. Um, I think the plan all along was to get Trump out of the way and then get Biden out of the way. I think and you're right. A totally, totally fresh race. Trump got out. Of the, Trump's gone now. So now we can put in, you know, whoever the Republican uh, Party is in disarray there. So I think that was the plan from whoever is pulling the strings. I think Nikki Haley was LBJ. Could have been. I really do. I think she I'm not saying she knew the plan was in Butler, Pennsylvania. Right. And I'm not saying anybody told her, but I think that's why she stayed in as late as she did. Knowing that she had no chance of winning. Was it someone to her and said, listen, pulled to Sam Rayburn with LBJ and said, listen, you better stay around. They're not, they're going to knock him off. Right. And I, and I, I'm, as we get, as this progresses further and further down the road, the more it smells like shit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It wasn't just some kid, some 18 year old kid in Pennsylvania that did this shit. There's more to the background on it. If there is some foreign bank accounts, I want to know who put money in there. Mm -hmm. And I think we, as Americans, people, nobody trusts the FBI and the CIA. Nobody. We the the people that are the ground agents on the floor, I don't have a problem with. Right. But the people that Tip Obama top. and them that put in there, they've weaponized that whole thing. Right. And, the, and and you're seeing more and more of that coming out all the time. I keep seeing people all the time. Well, they're fixing to drop Kamala for Big Mike. They're going to drop Kamala for Big Mike. That ain't going to happen. Obama. They they just raised three hundred million dollars. They ain't going to go through this shit again of having to pull her off to put somebody else up there and go through all the SEC stuff. It ain't happening. They're they're stuck with Kamala. We run out of time, isn't it? They're, they're, is it the twentieth or is it the fifteenth? They're they're done. They're time wise. They can't change nobody. They can't. All of a sudden, you're going to say, "No, Kamala's not the person we want." This person, you can't. The media can't keep pushing this shit like this. I mean, I I nineteenth. I saw Trump on an interview. Now this is coming from Trump. He says. Biden was forced out and did not want out, and Biden and Obama do not speak at all anymore. I'd There's some bad blood that. between that. That I, I, I don't know why Trump would lie about that. I'd probably agree with that. I don't think Biden wanted to go. No, he did not want to go, and he, then they forced her out. Now they're hiding Kamala. Can you imagine running for president of the United States? Not answering a single question? And not having any interviews in 15 days. Yeah. That's the same shit they did with Biden. And that's how stupid the people that vote on Democrats are. They buy into this shit. They think, oh, well, this is our person here, boy. This is going to be a change. You've got the same lady that worked for the dipshit before. Mm -hmm. If he was so incognitive that he could not run as president, how long has he been that way? Right. Did she cover for him for two years or three years? Yes, she did. So there, there's they can't change. Kamala is going to be their person. And I bet we don't see a debate between Trump and She's Harris. not. She she only wants to do it if it's under a controlled ABC. setting. He's like, no, I want a fucking debate where we can ask some questions, right? You know, and she doesn't she want said, to do no, that. She said she's not doing the Fox News debate in September that Biden agreed to. Trump has said he's not going back to ABC, yeah. but she's not going to agree to do that anyways because she can't. She has no. She would go to ABC. I bet she, she can't get in a real debate though with him, where he asks her questions. If she doesn't have a a, a monitor to look at, teleprompter, and she's yeah. too stupid to even read that. There ain't a dumber woman in the world. I don't. She must be able to blow a golf ball through a fucking garden hose. Mm -hmm. There is no way that woman has gotten up there on merit of her intelligence. Right. I listen to her talk. Nobody could be that stupid. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Pretty rough to listen to. I mean, it's terrible. But if you're running for president, you ought to be able to sit down and be able to ask questions. People like George Stopanopoulos or whatever that little cocksucker's name is, mm -hmm. his bitch ought to bitch slap him. His mom should have had an abortion. What a terrible fucking dude to be a to be a journalist. He ain't a journalist. He's a Clinton prop. Yeah. But that's the problem we're having with so many of these people. What's it take to get a real journalist to ask some tough questions? We as the American people, we deserve it. Well, I agree. You know, and she's not the border czar. Well, yeah, in twenty twenty one, we can see all that shit that come up. Yeah. You know, she hasn't been to the border at all. Mm -hmm. Said she has, but hasn't. Yeah. I mean, she's a she's a. I know there are people that are never Trumpers out there. 
And I've heard people say, well, he's just disrespectful. I wish he wouldn't do this. I wish he wouldn't want to do that. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. But he answers every question. Anything at all is a free deal to him, and he answers it. Why can't we get that from the other side? We deserve that for the other side. And I can't believe the Democrats, of all the Democrats in the world, that's the best fucking person that they have. Right. I like Trump as a candidate. I like him because he's not a politician. I do. That's my favorite thing about Donald Trump. He's not a politician. He's an asshole. He's arrogant. But he's got a side to him that's very good, and he loves America, and he loves our troops, and he loves our kids. Not the way Joe Biden does. Mm -hmm. And I like that. The other side hates America. You go to you listen to the Republican National Convention, USA, USA. You won't even see a flag probably at the Democratic National Deal. They and they hate America. They hate you. They hate me. They hate everything about us. They don't like us because we have guns. And the, us having guns is the only thing that's keeping us from what's going on in England right now. Oh yeah. Um, do you what do you think of Putin? He's now joined forces with Iran, maybe? Uh, if selling, you if you read the tea leaves, selling sell, buying and selling oil. Well, no, I mean he's he has said, "What does you Putin, armed my enemies, so I'm about to arm yours." What does Putin owe us? Nothing. So what do we owe Putin? Nothing. Nothing. So what? I mean, I don't. The, the, it, they're competitors of ours. Russia. Russia is a competitor of the United <clears throat> States for global. Control has been that way my whole life. And they're not as near as dominating as they were. People aren't near as scared. I grew up at a time when we were afraid we were going to get nuked the whole time. Yeah. I mean, well, you didn't wake up every day feared to nukes, but it just was something during the Cold War that you were worried about. It, it was a definite threat. They go to Cuba. Any country that was having any kind of disarray and stuff, they were going to try to go in with communism and take it over. Right. We were the good guys. They were the bad guys. Historically, if you look back, we're not as good a guys as we look like we are. Mm -mm. We were doing the same thing that they're doing. So am I shocked that he's in bed with Iran? No. He doesn't want to fight us, and we don't want to fight him. But we're going to fund all these proxy wars everywhere. Now, Israel is going to whip the shit out of Iran. They're going to. I'm telling you right now, they are going to. With they Russia's are, help? Oh, it does, that Russia can't even. If Russia and Israel got into it, Israel would whoop Russia, I think. But Russia then we would have to, to go to war, right? By proxy? Nah, I don't know if we would or not. R Russia's not going to get into it with Israel. That ain't going to happen. No more than we're going to get into it with Russia. Just because we're helping Israel beat Iran, just like Russia's helping Iran now, we're not going to go attack Russia because of this. Right. You know? I'd be more concerned with Russia and China getting together than I would them, and, the, and they still can't compete with us. We are a superior military to all them people. I, Israel is superior to all of them people militarily, and they are going to wipe the face with these camel clowns. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of deaths. Innocent people are going to die, but that's war. But that's what they're fixing to be in over there because Iran is too damn stupid to back down. Now, you know what's funny? You know who's funding Iran? Probably us. Barack Obama, when he gave them oh, right. yeah. $7 billion in cash in the middle of the night that we don't ever talk about. Now, you're telling me, if you're a Democrat and you listen to this, and there's not very many of them are, that clown is the biggest problem that ever happened to our country since 1760 or something. Mm -hmm. He has he has totally screwed America the whole way around. He's weaponized the FBI, the CIA, the DOJ, the IRS, everybody. He is a bad, bad, bad seed that's still in control. And that's why he wants a puppet like Kamala because he can control her too. The United States has accidentally sent at least $239 million in developmental assets to the Taliban since 2001. Yeah, accidentally. Whoops. How do you spend, send 239? That's the kind of stuff right there that needs to be cleaned up. That tells you. Well, my bad. That tells you how much fucking money we have. Well, I mean, I don't know about how much how much money they take from us. The, the United States cash flow is so big it's scary. I mean, now yeah, we're we're in debt by trillions of dollars. Who are we in debt to? I don't know how the debt works. I'm I'm assuming China somehow has bought our debt. I don't know. I mean, we can tell them to fuck off then, and just default. It's a foreign country. Who gives a shit? <clears throat> I can look it up. I'll, it's I mean, to Google. I mean, do do we owe American banks or do we owe a Chinese bank? I mean, we pay for everything in the whole world. So who are we in debt to? 
you know? I would. I like what Carrie Lake does, and I or said, and I like what uh, Sarah Huckabee said. We're not letting Chinese people own land in Arkansas or Arizona. Japan and China have been the largest foreign holders of U.S. debt for the last two decades, from 2000 to 2023. Annual totals are based on data from December, while the 2024 data is updated through April. So that doesn't tell me anything. But Understanding the national debt. How about that? I want to know who we owe the money to. Who holds these Says notes China, that they talk? China and Japan. So the Chinese government, you know, tell them to piss off. How old is this article? I mean, what are they going to do? Turn you in to the front and give you a bad credit rating? <laughs> I mean, we, we, we finance the whole world. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if this makes sense. This this is when we were still at a at a small sixteen trillion dollar debt. So I'm assuming this is an older article. Okay, <clears throat> U.S. federal debt is still a record high. This past we this this week it passed a milestone. The fourth straight year the deficit has passed the trillion dollar mark. As of today, the national debt stands at sixteen trillion dollars. So this is twenty trillion dollars ago. It, da, 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 da. So how does the U.S. borrow money? Treasury bonds are how the U.S. and all government, for that matter, borrows hard cash. They use government securities, which other countries and institutions buy. So the United National Debt is owned mostly in the U.S., but the $5 trillion foreign-owned debt is predominantly by Asian countries. So not all of... So basically... Bonds. Whoever yeah. buys bonds buys the American debt. Now, the Saudi Arabians, and, and I don't know a timeline on this, and I don't know it all for sure, but the Saudi Arabians <clears throat> nationalized their oil fields mm -hmm. after Texaco drilled, found it, put it in, and built the infrastructure, if I'm right. And I could be wrong on that. I think J. Paul Getty had a lot of that, too. But they... they I'm trying to think how to put this. They kicked us out and kept their oil and money and stuff. Kept all of it. And they nationalized their oil stuff. Right. And we're still buddies with them, and I've never understood that if that's what they did. $28 trillion is held by the public. $7 trillion intra-governmental debt. Whatever that means. This, this article is about a month old. That's, that's just interesting. But I wanted to know who owned most of it, and I still can't get a, an answer. Like, does Bank of America have a trillion dollars with the United States or blah, blah, whatever it is. But it says that, 30, is that what we're in debt is roughly the value of China, Germany, Japan, India, and United Kingdom combined. So who own, who has the $35 trillion? To me, if China— I just said $28 no, trillion is owned by the public in bonds. Okay, 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 okay. But if China, Germany, Japan, India, and UK's combined deal does not even equal up what we're in debt, well, one of those countries you'd think would want us to call our notes if they have a bunch of it. You would think, or I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is above my pay grade. This is when we need a, a congressman on two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars per household, or one hundred and four thousand dollars per Amer per person is what it would take. <clears throat> if every household gave a thousand dollars, it would take twenty two years. A thousand dollars a month. Yeah, a thousand a month to pay off our it would take twenty two years to pay off our national debt. The national debt's never gonna get paid off. No, they, they ain't even, never gonna they happen. don't even talk about it anymore. No, it, I think don't... the last person to talk about it was probably in the Obama administration. I bet when Romney and Obama were running, that was the last time the national debt was even a talking point. It's so big now and nobody even bothers to it's not even mentioned. Nope. Unless you're RFK. RFK talks about it quite a bit, but that's only because Trump and Biden are the ones that drove it up more than any other president combined. Warren Buffett said it best. Oh, hey, yeah, if, I love that. If not a congressman would keep their job or get paid until we have a balanced budget. Or if, uh, if, if, if it exceeds GDP, all sitting congressmen and women are ineligible for re-election. Yes. Fuck yeah. And no benefits you should not get a benefit to be doing your job yeah. you shouldn't 
I mean, if you're not doing your job, you shouldn't have a job and you shouldn't have any long-term benefits. Shouldn't be no fucking retirement. I don't understand how you can be in Congress one term or Senate one term and you get paid a lifetime retirement. I just can't believe that we're that far in debt and we have nothing to show for it. Oh, we got a ton to show for it. What? Look at our military. Look at our roads. Look at our infrastructure. I'm not falling that, apart. I'm not saying they're not spending money. Why are we spending money to Ukraine? Why? No, I know that, but I mean, I'm just saying we're 35 trillion in the hole, and there's our roads are awful. Yes, our schools are not safe. Sixty uh, percent of kids have you know chronic diseases now. I mean, we have not. There's no. There's no part of America where it's like. Yeah, that's where our hard-earned tax dollars have gone to, other than the military, other than the spending. You know, it's not like it's, it's it's not like we're living in Abu Dhabi or Dubai where everything is immaculate. It's, it, places are shitholes. Detroit, New York, San Francisco. You've never been to Borden County Schools, have you? L.A. I mean, all these towns, all these cities are just, they're, they're just New York City. It's just it's fucking ran by hoodlums now but, crime is rampant there's nothing to show for it. but but you said it earlier you said on the last did you know how far uh, nobody's going to be a cop anymore no you're telling me out of that 35 trillion dollars we couldn't have given first responders a pay bump and gotten more uh professionally trained police and firemen and first and paramedics we, that, that's because that, they don't give two shits I understand. about anybody we're worker bees the but only I'm just saying we don't have anything to show for this money that we're out and you said yes we do our military our, our military and they need raises. We should, be giving, we should be giving money to our military, more money to our mili- to our soldiers, not more money for weapons, but more money to our soldiers and to police keep them, and fire and to keep them. Yes, and teachers, anything and- like that. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but you go to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screw the town. At, what's what's the place that uh, the Morrow kid went to school at? Not, Borden County? No, it's not Borden County. It's the other one out there. The, I don't the one know. of those other little schools out there that we went to. Garden City. Garden City. Went to Garden City, Texas. Small town. Probably not 500 people live in town there. They have a school that's immaculate. Windmills. Windmill money. But those people spend their money on their infrastructure in their town, their tax dollars. And it goes to a great cause. They're helping themselves. Right. That's the problem we have, though, is then you get away from these big places. They don't spend money on their own cities. I don't know what they do with their money. The city of New York has a lot of stupid spending deals, like putting the immigrants up in nice big hotels and shit. That's bull crap. They shouldn't be paying for that. Mm -hmm. But nobody on that side wants to say anything because they're all getting swept under the rug. And it's, it's everywhere you look, it's that way. And we need more accountability at the local level. Take the federal government out of our shit. Outside of the military and stuff, we don't need a big federal government. We don't. We need to let the states and the local jurisdictions use their money the way they want to use it. Mm-hmm. Instead of sending all of our fucking money to the federal government so they could give it to Ukraine and wherever else, we need to take that money and we need to do things locally. If we got to spend a portion of what we have to send to the government from the sta- from the, in the city of Knox City, what could we do that would be good to help our town? A lot. Yeah. A lot of places can but what do we do? We send all that money to the government because we're too stupid to know how to use our money. Right. Just like the uh, the, uh, the well, they say we're too stupid to spend to spend our own money. Well, yes, they do. That's what they think. But they haven't done anything with our money the right they should. Social Security is the biggest Robin Hood scheme in the whole world. I think it's thirty three trillion. And it's not even home. a Robin Hood scheme. It's take from the poor and give to everyone. It's ridiculous. It's the dumbest thing ever, but when you then you see things like uh, the Democrat and the Republican Party is the same as the Democratic Party, but the Democratic Party comes out with these women and they push this abortion shit all the time. It's all they want to talk about is abortion, abortion. So are these women that are so worried about abortion and their bodies and their choices and stuff? Are they too fucking stupid to take a pill in the, at nighttime or in the morning? I guess, or to shut their legs, or to make sure the guy's wearing a condom. I mean, these are the same women are so fucking smart that they can't do that. That that's the main thing that we talk about. Or we talk about the gay rights. I don't know what right I have that a gay man doesn't have. I don't. I don't think there's any right out there at all. But then they hijack the gay stuff because everybody's bought into the gay marriage stuff. Nobody gives a shit who you marry or you sleep with. I don't know anybody that's opposed to someone gay getting married. If you're gay and you want to get married, knock yourself out. 
but have a huge problem with now they throw the transgender deal to the mix because the gay rights aren't the problem no more. Right. So it's abortion. It's transgender crap. Or it's these poor immigrants coming over here we got to give money to. Did you? There's a, a picture floating around right now of a lady from another country, and I don't know where she was from, bought $13,000 worth of groceries on an EBT card. $13,000. Wow. Who is okay in this crap? Right. If I go to Mexico, you know what's going to happen to my ass? <laughs> I'm going to starve before they're going to give me a dime. Right. I'm going to have to get a job and provide for myself. Why do we do this crap? And these are women questions because you can't answer it because right. there's not an answer. It's shit like this. It just kills America. Social Security is $73 trillion in the hole, not $33 like I thought. $73 trillion in the hole from something that should be a profit and a half. I mean, you, you take the money. This is how they sold it to you. We're going to take your money. We're going to hold it for you. That way, when you reach the age and you were not financially savvy, you didn't invest for your retirement, we're going to give you this money. That way, you're not a burden on the system. That, that's how they sold it. Yeah, 100%. The burden part right. is that... You, you, we're going to take you, care of your future. So you don't have to, you're not a burden to us. Right. We don't want to be responsible for you when you get older. So we're going to make it where you, you're taking care of. We're benevolent. All, all you got to do is work and pay into this system. And then you're going to get your money back you'll or have dole it money. out to you and you'll be set up. Yep. You won't have anything to worry about. You'll get to your golden years. You're going to retire. We've got money set aside for you. You have money set aside for you that we're going to, we're going to watch over. We're going to manage your money for you. And I bet statistics show you. That anyone under the age of 62 years old, how many people die before they reach 62? Right. I'm going to guess it's probably 20% probably of the population never makes it to 62 years of age. Now, all that money they paid in all them time is just gone. For Social Security. Fifteen percent of males, and 10%. Get, get, yeah, about ten percent. So between them, twelve oh, percent. No, 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 no. Is that what it said? Yeah. Oh yeah, approximately ten percent of females. It's die. So fifteen 12%. and a half and nine and a half. Right. So let's just go somewhere around twelve percent. Twelve percent of the people are never going to see sixty-one years of age, <laughs> and they won't collect a dime, and never collect a dime from that money. Right, and, and so that's free money. Mm -hmm. Money ahead, money you're not having to pay out. You yeah. collected it. Sorry, wish you would have had better genetics. Yeah, or not been in a car wreck, or, or yeah, not got whatever, shot, whatever or whatever it is. It is. But but it, you see, twenty year old, twenty five year old kids in Chicago getting shot on the street. Right. If that kid ever had a job and he paid in for two or three years while he worked at McDonald's or whatever he did, that money's in there and never gets out either. I mean, we just don't think of the little bit of money that all that stuff accumulates real fast. Or the guy at sixty years old that made really good living his whole life and put a lot of money in Social Security that never collects a dime. Right. You know, my father in law worked his whole life. He died at sixty something years old. He never collected a dime. And my brother in law did too. We died in his forties. What happens? You get a one time death benefit is what happens. It says it cannot inherit the deceased individual benefits. No, you can't. That's what I'm saying. You get a one time death benefit, I think twelve hundred dollars. Oh, nice. They give, they give you twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> Help you're, with the bearing cost. You know. Now costs five grand to cremate you. Now now hold on now. I don't know for sure how this all works, but if me and Michelle both get to, to Social Security age and one of us passes away, I think the other one gets a percentage of your social security until they die. Right, go go down to this third the, the third one right there. Yeah, there's a surviving spouses at full retirement age or older generally get 100% of the worker's basic benefit amount. Surviving spouse age 60 or older but under full retirement age gets between 71 and 90% of the worker's basic benefit amount. So I would get 70% of moms or 99 and she would do the same with me. So you do get it. So, yeah, but once they die, it's over. Yeah, it doesn't go to kids. No, I mean, that's it. But yeah. Let's say I put three hundred thousand dollars in there, and me and mom get a hundred thousand dollars out. There's this government made two hundred thousand dollars to give fucking Zelensky, right? Yeah, but who's the bright idea was it to get in Social Security money in the first place? They never should have touched the damn shit. Evidently, it was such a problem that they had to. The Social I mean, Security wasn't a problem. No, evidently there was such a problem of older people reaching, which I don't. The the retirement thing is. 70 years old anyway. That's a new concept. I, I don't understand what you're saying. 
I'm saying it had to have been a problem in America where people were reaching the age of retirement and could not make ends meet. No, 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 no. I'm talking who came up with the idea of diving into the Social Security money for other things. Oh, to put it in oh, the general oh, fund. Oh, oh, I know oh. why they did it. I oh. under there somebody back that had I don't trust politicians, but back in the day Somebody probably th- realized they had an aunt or somebody right. that was 70 years old. She can't work. She has no way of doing anything. We need to have a safety net for these citizens. They Makes worked sense. their whole life to build our country. Yeah. Let's help them out a little bit. Right. That I don't have a problem with. I didn't understand your original question. But, yeah, no. Somebody, I'm sure somebody in the government is like, yeah. listen, we got all this money sitting here. Yeah, that's exactly right. 15, 12% of people aren't going to need it anyway. We yep. can spend a little bit of it because uh, most of the time, they're either not going to get it or they're not going to take out everything that they put in. So like, like we've know, got, we've got some money to play with here. I would like to know the first politicians when they did it and when they dove into social and busted into social security, because they never should have done it. Okay. And the government never tries to fix anything. And they're going to continue. Me and Stacy Coker talked about this yesterday. Matter of fact, about social security, they're just going to kick the can down the road. The same 1983 problems was the first time. So Ronald Reagan did then. Well, evidently a lot of, Reagan apparently he had some plaque marks on his the uh, the sourcing of the outsourcing of jobs all started under Reagan. Want you know want more gains for the corporations since night since nineteen eighty three. Oh George W. Bush. What's it say? Says they were build, there were beliefs that George W. Bush financed income tax cuts in the Iraq War by plundering money from Social Security. Oh. These beliefs are attributed to the following statement: Next time a Republican tells you that Social Security is broke, remind them that President Bush borrowed 1.37 trillion from Social Security surplus revenue surplus to pay for his tax cuts for the rich. Quit taking the tax cuts for the rich bullshit. Tax cuts go all the way down. It ain't a rich man's deal. And war in Iraq and never paid it back. Because there ain't nobody gets a bigger fucking tax break than poor people. And I'm going to tell you right now, and if this hurts your feelings, tough shit. If you make less than $30,000 a year or something, and you get back an income tax check of $8,000 because you got four fucking kids, you're the one that's benefiting more than anybody is because you're not paying in. It's not a tax refund. It's a tax check. It's Christmas in February. So let's cut that shit right now. Quit talking about all the rich people. If rich people get tax breaks, they usually are hiring more jobs, and it's making money to the economy. So anyways, that was my rant on that shit. But anyways, it says that George W. Bush is the one that took $1.37 trillion, if he did do that. I'm sure he did. I'm, I'm sure. I don't, I'm don't. i not taking up for him. <clears throat> Here's what we could do. How much is I can I can do that. I'll see if it breaks it down by president. It said Bush was 1.3, but it didn't say what Obama did. You know, etc. But who is approving this? The House, the, the House of Representatives is supposed to be the purse strings for our country. So they're the reason we're broke because they haven't done a very good job. Right. And I just I can't imagine. Can you imagine us sitting in here and having a board meeting and us being broke and thought, you know, our neighbor over there needs a new irrigation system. Let's give him one hundred thousand dollars and let's call the bank and borrow the money to help him out. That's what America does. Mm-hmm. And it's dumb. So I don't know. We might be in the weeds here with some of these articles. Um, <clears throat> presidents do not borrow money, but I think what you mean is how is how much was borrowed over various administrations. Here is information as close as you will find. For example, you will find the Reagan administration borrowed seventy five billion dollars. A lot of the money was actually borrowed to pay interest on past borrowing. If you look at the Obama administration, for example, the program created no excess cash to borrow. Every penny of the payroll went to pay the benefit. So maybe this? I don't know. Like I said, we might be in the weeds on this one. And I don't even know what this means. This old age and survivor's <clears throat> insurance trust fund from 37 to 23. Uh, I was just looking for how much presidents took from this. I wasn't looking for this. So... That's not it. I don't think unless there's something down here. No, there's not. It's just it's a screwed up system. It has been, but it had the the intentions of it was really a good thing, and it should have been. Right. I mean, there's no reason why that Social Security shouldn't work. 
Well, yeah, there is. Well, you, got, no, you got a bunch of greedy politicians out no, there. No, 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 that that's right. But that have the, never, most of them have never had a business. I mean, they're not financially savvy at all. And no. it's Rob Peter to pay Paul. It's always been that way. And it's one one person goes family member, becomes a member of Congress, and another family member does. And it's all the rich blue blood people that continue to do that just about. I was going to do this on a did you know, but did you know that this will be the first election since 1976 that has not had a Bush Yes, you've you done that. You talked about this already. No, not not a Biden or a Clinton. I think there's one more. Bush? Bush, Obama, Biden, Clinton. That's probably it. Just those four families? Since 1976. 1980, it was Reagan and Bush. Yep. Then it 80, was Bush again. 88 was right Bush again. Then it was Bush again. And then Bush again in 92. And then Clinton. And then it was Clinton in 92. And 96. 96. And then Bush, Bush again in 2000 and 2008. Obama. In 2000 and, uh, then it was Obama and Biden. And then it was Clinton again. And then Clinton and then Biden yep. again. So 1976, almost 50 years of American history. With four fucking crooked-ass families. Four families. Yeah. So, I don't know. Makes a little bit more sense. So now we got Kamala and Trump. As of right now. What are your what are your, what are your states? Because it's going to be Kamala, and it's probably going to be the, the the Shapiro guy from Pennsylvania, which is going to kill her with the Muslims. But I think I think right now Minnesota goes red. There's a good chance of that. I think I, I think then people have had enough of this shit. They're sick of all the Muslim crap in the big cities. They're they're tired of it. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine the Muslims are really going to support Kamala much more than they will Trump because they're pissed off at Biden. Um. Kamala's race deal is is ridiculous. I don't give a shit what if she's Indian, black, whatever she could be. Right. But she's lied about it. Mm-hmm. And the media wants to cover her for that. Well, she's lied about everything. And I'm tired of the lies from her. I just want her to have some fair questions. I think she's a terrible candidate. I don't think she would be a good president. If she gets elected president of our country, we were we are done. And and I and I really wholeheartedly believe that. I think you're gonna see mass chaos if she's elected. Because no one's going to trust that she got elected because we can't believe that there's going to be 80 million dumbasses in our country. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Everything's upside down. But it, we'll see. It's going to make, make for great television. Are we going to watch any of it? It's going to be great TV. Just a big soap opera. Oh, because like nobody's going to watch. Seeing. She's being hidden just like Biden was. There's yeah. nothing to talk about with her. I mean, that's the deal. If you had Obama when he ran for office, and 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 looking back, he's the biggest mistake our country ever elected. But when he was an when he was out campaigning and stuff, there was a lot of excitement, mm-hmm. a lot of excitement. She brings zero excitement. Right. One candidate brings a ton of crowd everywhere he goes, and then you've got her that can't open that can't fill an auditorium. If she went to Knox City and she done a speech today, there wouldn't be a hundred people there. Right. But I'm sure they've I'm sure they've got a plan. Unfortunately, well, whatever plan they have, it's not good for America, right? Do you think we'll be especially you, if it's especially like just going by the eye test of everything that we're seeing? Like she can't fill an auditorium. Trump is packing stadiums, and you know every town he goes to, people are lined up. And I mean, just that eye test alone, there's gonna be a lot of pissed off people because I think a lot of people feel like this is in the bag for Trump. So, I don't know. Do you think? Do you think they try to cheat? Well, of course. Yes, I mean, I, they will. I hope both sides do. <laughs> we need to cheat better than they cheat. Fuck yeah, one hundred percent. We shouldn't have to cheat in a fair election at all. No, you wouldn't figure, but we're gonna have to. not not cheat, but make sure that all the all the, all the eligible votes are counted. And yeah, yeah. My prediction is if somehow they do cheat on this election, that they we the the U.S. citizens will wipe out the politicians within a year or two. I think people are at that point. I mean, we come real close to that. We were centimeters away from that. Not just recently. Right. The, the, the people that use us, cause we're worker bees for whoever's running things Mm -hmm. worldwide. Things globally are in the shits. I mean, you just had a shitty election in Venezuela and those people are about to overthrow that deal. Um, in England right now, the Muslims are stabbing English people. They took away their guns. We haven't played cowboys and Muslims here yet. It's a mess. But let's get I, a little boy's perspective on everything. We'll get we'll get Reese in here. He can solve all the world's problems. You know, I'd really am starting to wonder if Reese is really your son. Why? I think he's uh, he belongs to Dennis O'Leary. He looks just like him. 
Now you're on. Nope. Yeah, you are. Want to bet? Yeah, oh, we can hear you. On. You're on headphones, aren't we? But your deal is. Oh. Better? Can you, can you hear us now? Yeah. How was how was the baseball game? The baseball game, it was fun, but Boston pulled out with the win. How, how was the circus? Did you like it? That's wasn't not, what I thought. What, what was you expecting? What were you expecting? I was expecting, like, people riding unicycles going through fire. He, he did. He didn't. Oh, he didn't go through fire. So but you was he, expecting old. It was the world's tallest unicycle that he rode. Was you Dad. Expe- was you expecting was. a circus, like, like back in the day with elephants and jugglers and clowns? No, and, I was expecting, like. People do stunts and stuff. Do they have I mean, trapeze? They did. They did. What are you talking about? They didn't do like um. They didn't ride a bike through fire. They didn't. No, there do... was no fire. Yeah, there was right. no fire. That's because right. they had a, t- a tent burned down one time, killed a bunch of people. Seriously, that's why they quit doing Barnum and Bailey. That's why they quit having it in tents. You got to see a human cannonball. Yeah. How far did they shoot that guy out? Far. So it wasn't impressive. The lady went out at 65 miles an hour. 65 miles an hour felt That's like how... two miles an hour. Well, I mean, she didn't go very far, but yeah, she still so, had a lot of speed. So you don't think y'all got y'all's money worth is what you're saying, It, it wasn't the best. Okay. I didn't like it. Like, it, ma- it made my blood pressure spike. Why? When they were doing, oh, I just knew somebody was going to fall. What were they doing? Well, there was one circus act where it's like they, there's these metal balls and there's a guy in each one and like it's kind of like a hamster wheel. Yeah. Well, then one guy gets... They both end up getting out of the cage and they're standing on top of these circles and they're like, it goes running up, around and then it comes back and then they're like jumping and I just knew a how guy far was up were they? High. So like they really fall and high. killed him. It would have yeah. been bad. Yeah, because like you're gonna fall and all that metal underneath you is gonna take you. So it would have been bad. So yeah. nobody's in there pulling for the guy to fall. There's one no time, safety net. One time he slipped and I'm like, oh here it is. There's no safety net. No, no nothing. Yeah, I wouldn't do that shit. I mean, I don't know how there couldn't have been a safety net because, you, like, it's it's these two balls and it's got it's connected, and then it goes like this over yeah. and over and over and over. May, I didn't like it. My blood pressure got. Did up. they do the trapeze walk or the tight wire walk? They did the tight walk. They I don't rode like a, that. They that rode makes a, me nervous. They rode a bike on the tight wire. They had stacked yeah. people on their shoulders and rode bikes on the tight wire. When I was Reese's age, they had uh, ABC used to do like a wide world of sports. They do this weird crap, and it was only three channels. So you watch it was like, oh cool, this can be cool. Yeah, a guy in Puerto Rico was going to tightrope between two fifty-story hotels. No, oh, not good. And guess what happened? Fell. Yep. Fell. On national TV. Yikes. And so I just don't, you know, didn't have a, it. It took off. Wouldn't wear the wire because mm. they didn't want to have a safety wire on or something. It just. Mm, I just I don't like heights anyway, so that stuff scares the piss out of me. Let me ask you something, Reese. Yeah. If you had to vote today, who would you vote for for president? President? Yeah. Trump. Easy. I mean, Dad's a different guy. He might vote for Kennedy. <laughs> but you would but vote for Trump. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, me too. Well, me and you're on the same page. Yeah. There's Trump, no doubt about no, it. Don't even think about it. Just Trump, right? Uh, yeah. Did you get your flag back in your yard? Yeah. Yeah. So you're proud because you was afraid when y'all didn't have a flag that people were going, what? Huh? What'd I, you, didn't, what'd I you, never said that. I thought you said when they did, y'all didn't have your flag in your yard, you told your dad you was afraid everybody's going to think y'all were Democrats. No. Andy, you told me he said that. I don't I don't. Remember. Yeah, I think you said that. You no, did. I didn't. How long was that ago? Oh, it was like know. three years ago or something. Y'all took your flag oh. down. We had a storm or something. And you told your dad you said, because you told me you said this. You oh, told him, yeah, I remember. He's like, gosh, dang, Dad, we don't have a flag up. People are going to think we're Democrats. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what you thought? I didn't think it was actually going to happen, but... Are you ready for summer to be over with? You ready for no! school to start? You're not ready for school to start? I, I, I haven't even got all my bucket list down. Your what? what? My bucket list down. What is your bucket list? Huh? What is your bucket list? I want to see most of the countries in the United States. States in the United States. State, yeah, states in the United You're States. You're nine. Yeah. You got time. Yeah, I know. You got a leg up. How many states have you been to? Have you not counted? <clears throat> um... Been to Washington. Washington, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. And then... Um, You've been to Colorado. Mm-hmm. You've and been then, to New Mexico. And then I've also been to Nebraska. Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, Oklahoma yeah. Texas. You've been to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. You've been to Alabama, Mississippi. I've been to a lot. Georgia, states. Florida, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. You've been to... Uh, New York. New York, you've been to Kentucky because we you look for the chicken. 
What chicken? When you we got off the, the airport, you were wanting to know where the KFC oh, yeah. was. I was. Like, where's the fried chicken? You've been to Maine. You've been to Vermont, uh, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. You've been to Massachusetts, New York State. So a pretty good chunk for a nine-year-old kid. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Look at Sore. this. Here's your map, Reese. You've been here. Yeah, Washington. You've been there. Oregon. You've been here. You've been there. Yeah, and then Oklahoma. Here, all the way up to here. To Nebraska. Yeah. Louisiana. You took this little corridor when we went and saw Payne graduate. Mississippi, yeah. Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina. Kentucky. In Kentucky. We landed in Kentucky. Because I wanted to know where KFC was because, I mean, it's named after Kentucky. Well, so, I understand. I mean, there should be a KFC somewhere around. You'd figure. You'd figure, yeah. it, you'd figure they'd be everywhere. <laughs> when we got off uh -huh. the airport, that's New the first York. thing. Said, Where's the chicken? I'm like, what are you talking about? New York, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. Yeah. You got a, you got a leg up. Yeah. You've been to more states than I was at your age. Me too. By mm -hmm. a lot. I had been, At your age, I had been to Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas. And I, I got news for you. I don't think that you've been to Maine. I haven't been to Kansas. Yes, you have. We went through well, Kansas. You we got to go Nebraska. to Kansas to get to I, Nebraska. I mean, I haven't been there. You went you, right through it. You got to go through Kansas to get did to Nebraska. Did we stop and like? We I'm sure we did. I mean, we ate in Kansas. We ate in Garden City, Kansas. Yes. Oh yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. We had we Buffalo ate. Wild Wings. Yeah, that was great, but it stunk really bad. Yeah, Garden City's not a not a nice place. Um, it smelled like cow poop. So and and like I got bad news for you, but. If all the states in the United States are on your bucket list, we're not knocking that off in a summer. I was going to say, well, you got planned. Like, you're not going to go to all 50 states in one summer. And that would be a lot of states. It, well, yeah. And a lot of gas. Judge, Judge and Shell are 56 and 55, and it took us a long time to get every state. And I, and I hadn't been to Hawaii yet, so I, and I'll never go because I don't care about going to Hawaii. But that's, I mean, you've been to, shit, look at the foreign countries you've been to. I've you've, only been to three. You've been to Costa Rica? Costa Rica, yeah. You've been to the Bahamas? Yeah. But the Canada. Canada. Bahamas was hot. Yeah. Mexico. Oh, y'all haven't been to Mexico. We're gonna go there next year. So no. you've been to you've been to three foreign countries. Uh, that's what I said. Three. Yeah. And that's you've been and you've been to Puerto Rico. That's three. United States probably. No, no. Bahamas. Territory. P Puerto Rico's part of the US. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bahamas, Canada, Costa Rica. Why is Puerto Rico not on there? It's just states. It's not a state. It's a, oh, it's a country. It's no, a province. No, no. It's, what it's is a it? weird territory. Yeah. What's a territory? It's controlled by the United States. Uh, they don't vote for our presidential election, but they have a representative in Congress that war that represents them. Oh. It's kind of a weird deal. They're and they're not the only place like that. There's a bunch of different. Uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands is the same way. Uh, the Marshall Islands. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of places that are U.S. territories that are not part of the U.S. Yeah, back to the circus. I mean, they say it's the greatest show on earth, mm -hmm. but then like they only did like how many acts? Five. It's two hours. Two hours, but an act was so long that you could barely even. So you would not do want to do it again. I mean, if they did something different. So if they did the same if, thing if, over and over If they had fire, if they were jumping through fire. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, as a parent, this sucks. You spend money, think something your kid's really going to enjoy it. They weren't impressed. So would there you... was, now, now, hold on. If they, same act, same act that we saw, uh -huh. okay? It, but it, hold on. Okay. Same act that we saw, mm -hmm. but there was one segment where a bicycle went through a hoop of fire. Then it would have been okay? Like that's all. That's all. This act was missing. Okay. It's just the fire. There was two things it was missing. Okay. In the description, I mean, like all of the videos that we watched. Yeah. It said that that was gonna happen, and none of it happened. I mean, like there was um. There was like this mat with uh, loops, and, I mean. They were riding a bicycle of so it was it was weird. Um and I don't know what it was, but they were driving through it and uh I mean it was crazy. I mean I mean I thought that was gonna happen. I thought they would do the same act every day. But they didn't. What what so. so if you had to choose next year to go to the circus again or go watch Philadelphia and Dallas play I football, that was gonna happen. That, that, that guy, 
Yeah. Would you Would you rather watch Philadelphia and Dallas play football or go to the circus? No, you can go to the circus anytime. So you'd rather go watch the Eagles play football? Heck yeah, that's a once in a lifetime deal. Well, there's people go to eight games a year that live in Philadelphia. Yeah, I know, but like we don't live anywhere to where you can see. So none of that, none of that was fun. The trapeze and no, that was cool. But I mean, seeing them flip around and catch each other, that was cool. But there was like a few acts. Like you, you remember the one that where they had the uh, like a board that they would jump on and yeah. literally just jump up and down. I mean, that was well. Boring. I mean, they were killing. They had to. They had to. So here's the deal. Do they have a net under them when they're doing this? No. Yeah, no, they do. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah, yeah. Do anybody fall and have to hit the net? No, yeah. that's how they dismount. So there's three stages, right? Yeah. There's the one that was in front of us, there's the main one, and then there's that other one. Mm -hmm. They will take your attention to some of to different places so that they can set up at these other stations. So like whenever they were jumping on the board in front of us, everything was dark everywhere else because they were setting stuff up for like the flying trapezes to go yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. So there I mean were... not everything is it's not gonna be two hours of just insane That's stuff. That's impressive to watch those people them trapeze artists. Oh yeah. It's amazing. Um one thing I was planning on seeing mm -hmm. was there was uh this cube with holes in it. Mm -hmm. And I was expecting, I saw it in a video, where two people would go through, one would go through the bottom, and one would go through the top. And they would just keep on going, like doing flips through it and all that. Right. And, I mean, that was one of the things I was planning on seeing. Let, let me tell you about the uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus. That's the oldest one. The Riders of the Ringling Brothers. Which is the well, old one? They like both together now. But which was the old, old one? I don't know. I think it was, I think it was the... Barnum Bailey. But anyways, back in the day when they would, because I actually, when I was a kid, we went to a circus where they would use the elephants to to raise up the tents. Mm -hmm. There were three mm -hmm. ring tents and they would use the elephants to help do it. But when they would go to town back, now and this was before I was born, back in the day they would come on a train. And the Barnum and yeah, Bailey, had their, yeah. they had their own train. And they would come into town with the train and have all the circus stuff there. Yeah, I, I, I see. I see. If you go to Madagascar uh, 3... They do that? Yeah. I mean, like, it's a whole circus deal, and they're getting hunted. Uh, it was actually two, and they're getting hunted by... Um, this is the thing that Reese didn't think was impressive. That right there? No, 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 Well, they're jumping on no. that board. Oh. Not that. The other one. The other one on the right, the left. Remember that? Mm -mm. There was one on the left. Right, where yeah, it was it's just, just like three guys plain... doing it. Yeah, That's pretty that... damn impressive, if you ask me. Yeah, that that one is, but the other one, not not so this much. one. Yeah. Where's this? Is that the balls next to it on the right you were looking at, Mr. Mingo? I don't huh? know. I'd have to. Uh, I'd have to I think when you look. hit on that, the next video was the actual one from that. That's that's very impressive. Not really. But... Yeah, me and Tony can do that out here. Would you pay money to watch me and Tony do that on a board? You, since you're fat. Yes, this but... one right here. That. Yeah, I didn't like this. That was crazy. That made my heart race. They're not then, that high up, though. Yeah, they get out. Of, no, they're a lot higher than you think. I mean, then they get out of it, and then they're on top of the... They jump out. ...spinning balls. And that made you nervous, Andy? Yeah, because one guy tripped a little bit. One guy was on the top, and, I mean, one guy was in, and they were uh doing their thing. One guy was. And then one of the guys was like Spider-Man, grabbed one side of it, and then grabbed the other... And, and they're doing flips in. in there. Yeah, and I and I and he swooped in, and I just knew he was gonna jump out or do something weird. When when Payne was probably about your age or a little younger, I took him and me and mom took him and Wes to Abilene to like a monster trucks deal where they yeah. did this deal. And like, a, that's more like a circus and or a, a guy, fair. Yeah, it, well, and, and it was at the. Taylor County Expo Center or something is inside. But anyways, a guy did a big jump on a motorcycle mm -hmm. and his freaking motorcycle hit the ceiling. Uh-huh. And he crashed. He fell at least three or four stories down and he he lived. But I thought, ooh. <laughs> it's gonna be tough to tough to, to explain. Tough to explain this one, do you? Yeah. You know, they're like, oh look at that guy. He's a big chicken. He didn't even get up. Well, hell yeah. <laughs> fell three stories, landed on his side, the motorcycle landed on him. He's hurting. So Reese, before we get off of here, what are your football predictions? I think 
the first two, the first three games, um, the Eagles are going to lose. The well, first you, have, three? you haven't even seen their schedule. I know. But you why just, do you, you think, just pick of the first three games? Why do you think? Because they're last lose? year they played three games uh-huh. against the worst teams in the world, and uh, so they went through three games, and I knew they were going to win the first game. Right. And they came out. I mean, it was twelve, no, fourteen to. I think they're going to win the first three games, Reese. I'm looking at it. They play the Packers. That's going to be a tough game. Yeah. Then they play the Falcons. That should be a win. And then well, they play, then they play the Saints. Year, last year they played the Falcons and they lost. That was a shock. I don't think that they did. I don't think that they yeah, played they the did. Falcons. I think I think you're I think you're just talking out of your butt here. Nuh-uh. Yeah, you know, they didn't play the Falcons last year. They well, beat they well, beat the Vikings. They lost to the Buccaneers. They beat the. They had a horrible you're, you're, year. You're you're selling you're selling them a little short here, kid. They, they had a rough year last year. And well, I don't, it I, didn't. It did not end well. I will give you that. Yeah. But I mean, they played well in September and October. But if you looked at their stats last year, mm. uh, I'll I'll agree with that. Yeah, they they were they won won a lot of games with Jalen Hurts and all them. It and ended then poorly. Where, and then it whenever Jalen Hurts and uh, AJ Brown got hurt, whenever AJ Brown got hurt, it was like. I don't know if they're going to win this because mm. A.J. Brown and uh, Jalen Hurts are really good. And so, I mean, let's just look at their schedule. Packers, who do you think is going to win? Eagles, Packers. Tough game, no clue. You got to pick one. Eagles versus Packers? Yep. In oh. Brazil, Friday night. Okay. September 6th. Um, What is the... Packers, uh, quarterback, tight end, and all that. I'm Everybody, gonna, they're all healthy. I'm going to say... That the Packers are going to win this game. I'm taking the Eagles. Think... You just got to pick one. It's hard because well, it's they're 50, both 50. really good teams. Let's say, okay, let's say the Eagles win. How about that? Eagles win. Then they play the Falcons. I think that's another win for the Eagles. It's an so now they're 2-0. Two, the two and oh. They play the Saints, 3-0. Yeah, that's definitely They play the Buccaneers. Buccaneers mm. are good. I'm going to give that to the Buccaneers. They're 3-1. and one. I'm going to say Eagles are going to win against the Packers. Okay. So you, we've got them at 3-1 and one going into the Browns game. Browns game, easy win, Eagles. Well, I don't know about easy win. I don't know win. about easy. They're Browns got good. a hell of a defense, but they're playing in Philly, so I'm going to take Philly too. So now they're 4-1. and one. They play the Giants, 5-1. and one. Yeah. They're playing that's in a, Cincinnati. Bengals, no clue. That's a five and that, that's a loss. That's five and two. Yep. Jaguars, six and two. Cowboys, they're gonna split with. No, I think six and three. Is is this the uh when Jalen Hurts is not here or Jay, we're gonna assume we're that Jalen Hurts, Hurts is playing. playing the whole year. Six and three. Seven and three. Eight and three. Eight and three. Eight and four. Nine. Eight and four. Nine, Nine and four. four. 10 and 4, 11 and 4, 12 and 4, 13 and 4. 13 and 4 is 13 and 4 would give you home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Yeah, I think I think the, this might be the Eagles year. I wouldn't go school talking a bunch of crap though, uh, Yeah, to the you know, fans. maybe maybe just wait a little bit. Don't start out the year talking a bunch of crap like you did the couple years I ago. I did not. You didn't want to go to school the next day because you knew that your principal me, Yeah, me, me, no, no. You don't have to say her name, but no. you knew that you'd talked enough crap that they were going to talk crap back. No. You said lunch was going to be terrible. You know what? No, 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 no. This is what happened. This is what happened. So, hey, I'm I'm having a good day at school. I've got to recess and all that. Yeah. And we're talking about who would win the Super Bowl and who do you think would go to the Super Bowl mm-hmm. and all that. And, um... So whenever, uh, I mean, we were just having a good talk, and Hayden started talking and said, Eagles are going to lose the game. And I'm like, y- you're sure about that? Mm-hmm. You're, you're 100% sure? So then he started all going, oh, Eagles are going to lose. The Eagles are, t- have, this has been a terrible season and all that. They were in blah, the Super blah, Bowl, blah, blah, blah. but not a terrible year. And then, uh. I mean, so you weren't talking smack back. No, you were just defending your Eagles, right? Yes, right. basically. Okay, he, I mean, he just started saying stuff. Yeah, and he, I mean, I was just having a good time playing football, and we were playing catch. 
And that's your best friend. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, you know. He happened to be right that game. The Chiefs <laughs> did win. Yes, they did. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question before we get off here, because I got a question for you. Okay. Yeah. Did your dad really try to smuggle a knife into the circus? Yes. Did you not try to tell him he couldn't do that? Yes, I did. And he didn't listen, did he? Yeah. I said, Dad, go back. I mean, there's not a long line now. I mean, you could go back, and it could be two minutes from now that you're back. So your I dad mean, was just being hard-headed. Yeah, and I said, Dad, we're at the beginning of the line. Just go put up your knife, and by the time you Y'all would have been at the end of the line by the time I made it to the car and back. No, we wouldn't because, okay, think about it this way. <clears throat> you would have you would you would have taken the knife back. Yeah. I got another one right here. Why didn't you just run? I, I saw how f I know, but why didn't you just run all the way to the car? And I saw how it was a hundred degrees out there. I'm not running. Dad, we ran a mile. Listen, we are in America, Reese. There is not much anymore that separates us in America from a third world country that I don't even recognize. And one of those things is the ability for modern men like myself to carry a pocket knife. I should have that right. Yeah. I am a man. I, I am a manly man, right? <laughs> you would call you would consider me a manly man, very rugged. Um so there's a cockroach. <laughs> yeah, I don't like bugs. <laughs> On the uh on the uh, curtains, and Mom said, Andy, get in here and come squish this bug. And he goes, how big is it? <laughs> and Mom goes, not very big. And Dad walks in here and goes, I got another knife now. I know. No but, big deal. And then, so then he walks in, and he's like, I'm not squishing that dang bug. And I'm like, Dad, it's a bug. Just walk anyway, up to it. Anyway, I Ooh. should, I you know. We should be able to carry pocket knives. Um, 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 um. But anyway, I got another knife, so it's not a big deal. I know you were wishing that I was not going to embarrass you. Yeah. Did I embarrass you at all? Kind of. Really? Yeah. Well, it wasn't my intention. Did we have a good weekend overall? Did you enjoy the baseball game? Yeah. Good. Except for Jameson throwing up. I, yeah. that, that thing smelled it. Yep. I even stepped in a big club of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> it All was right. horrible. Well, summer's over, bud. We love you. I'm proud of you. It's lunchtime now. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, to, I'm ready for school to start. Aren't you? Uh, no. -uh. All right. Well, where are you taking me to lunch at today? Oh, at our house, we're eating steak, poppers. Um, maybe we gotta go for get lunch. Poppers? Huh? We gotta for go lunch? get some no, poppers. No, 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 no. For Oh, tonight birthday for dinner. Shell's yeah, birthday we're dinner tonight. Yeah, eating pea salad, poppers, steak, and all the good stuff. I bought good steaks too. I bought ribeyes and New York strips. Woo! So Reese we're is not a fat guy, so he'll have the strip. All right, Reese, sign us out of here. Oh. What do we tell everybody? What? Love you, bye. Oh, love you, bye. Watch for dear. Peace, bye. Check out all of our sponsors. Go check out Ducks Unlimited. Get involved however you can. Lucky Duck, Looking Glass Podcast, Shin Gear, Dirty Duck Coffee, Dive Bomb Industries, Pacific Calls. Use our promo code BHP25. Boss Shot Sales, MLR Graphics, Mitch Hall Chevrolet, Double T British Candle, Stanfield Outfitters, Mossberg, Mallard Bay, Outdoor Specialties, and Hemp Hill Farm. Use our promo code BHP.